three, two, one, go. Welcome, everybody, to the Triad of the Force podcast, a podcast from three Puerto Rican friends coming together to do deep dives into Star Wars and other nerd-related media. This is season one, episode 11, The Bond That Forges Us. And this time, we have a guest. Goose, why don't you introduce us? Welcome to Brian from Pink Milk. Hello. Hi. How's it going? <laughs> Thank you for having me. I'm very excited. Uh, if any of our uh, viewers have been watching us recently, you know that like I was on last week's episode of Geeky Waffle, and Brian was also there uh, joining me, and like we were so enamored by his presence <laughs> that we just had, had to have him. So we are very, very, very excited to have him on the episode. <laughs> the feeling is likewise. <laughs> uh, so before, uh, we're going to talk about a lot of fun things, especially about, obviously, Star Wars fandom and uh, the characters that we like and what they mean to us. But before we go into any of those topics, we always have to ask the obligatory question, which is, Nani, how is your Clone Wars <laughs> watch going? Because, Brian, I don't know if you, if you know this, but Nani, who is a self-proclaimed Star Wars fan, has never, and I mean never, seen yep. the Clone Wars, Star Wars Rebels, or Star Wars Resistance. Yeah. I am telling you. And I'll forgive you, you for Resistance. <laughs> you can be a Star Wars fan. Yeah. And not see those things. Yeah. However. Mm-hmm. You're missing you're out. You're missing out. Mm-hmm. I know. So <laughs> when, we started, <laughs> when we started doing this podcast, I promised to watch Clone Wars. And my husband has been trying to get me to watch them forever because he's a huge fan. So is my brother. And then I finally have started watching it. I finished season three and I just started season four. I haven't gotten that much into it because then I found Young Justice on HBO Max mm. this past weekend and I kind of had to watch it. So oh, you haven't seen that either. I hadn't seen it. the third season. I seen the first, okay. season, but I hadn't okay. seen the third season because I never bought the, um, um, the DC channel. Mm-hmm. But now that it's on HBO Max, I found yeah, I was like, oh my God, we have to watch it. So we kind of bitch watched that one in two days. And so Clone Wars, I only watched like four episodes, I think, four or five episodes. It was the um, uh, the Mon Calamari episodes. The, oh, yeah, yeah. Which was great, great to see them. Great. Yeah, which and, ties and, into last episode. Of I know that a lot of people <laughs> thought that was going to be the planet in. Yeah. So I know. But um, it was really cool to see them, you know, battling underwater and how they tackle, you know, all the maneuvers and stuff with the lightsabers and everything. underwater. Yeah, Fisto was, for the win. Yeah. Mm. Oh, Fisto's fantastic. I always loved him. And, Even Jar Jar yeah, came in with the Hail Mary. Yep. And then they <laughs> segued into like uh, a couple episodes of... Uh, you know, Dar Jar Jar um, <laughs> <laughs> on Naboo. Good, so. good. You have, you have joined the dark side. Uh, yeah, and then that episode that my husband says, and this is how Anakin ruined the Clone Wars, even before he killed younglings, by having bit to trade it off uh, for Grievous, that they had actually captured him, and then Anakin mm-hmm. gets himself captured, and they have to trade them off, so... So good. yeah, I, yeah. I've never uh, thought about that. That's awesome. Yeah, so <laughs> no, that's that's a good, yeah. That's like a good turning point after. Yeah, Wars because well. if they would have had Grievous captured at that point, the war would have ended a lot earlier. Well, I'm pretty sure Palpatine had would have had something. <laughs> yeah. Palpatine and is still, the master of contingencies. Yes, and the chips had already been installed for Order sixty six, so I'm sure <laughs> something would have happened. Maybe not as seamless as it ended up happening, but you know. I mean, know. I'm pretty sure. I'm pretty sure that Palpatine like didn't really care which way the war would have gone because I'm mm. pretty sure that if the separatists had won, he would have been yeah. the leader as Darth Sidious in that one. So, like, I'm sure he was cool as a cucumber. Mm. Yeah. I've been watching The Queen's Gambit, which is a great show, and I feel Watched like... <laughs> I haven't finished the last episode because okay. I'm like, I don't want it to end. It's so good. It's so good. <laughs> yeah. I've, I've, I have been only been halfway, but with I... that person. Oh, she's... Wait. Wait. I kind of feel betrayed by the show, though, because when I started watching, I'm like, oh, who is this badass bitch that I don't know anything about? Mm-hmm. And it's just like, she's not real. I'm like, God, <laughs> you can't do that to me. You can't like, <laughs> present some historical uh, show and then just give me a person that doesn't exist. Come on. I was like Wikipedia. <laughs> and I'm like, why isn't she showing up? <laughs> and then it's just like, no, she's not, she's not real. She's fake. I'm like, Thank you, Netflix. <laughs> wait, wait, wait. Go stay away from historical fictions. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I was like, she, she wasn't even whitewashed. She's just not existent. Uh. <laughs> so dis- so disappointing. Yeah. She's so great, though. Yeah, she's on I love everything her. now. I am 
I don't know if I've ever been this infatuated with like an actor before. Like I am just like, she's this beautiful creature that is yeah. like an alien. I'm just infatuated. Yeah, yeah. Like, she's infatuated. great. <laughs> mm-hmm. An alien. Yeah. She's yeah, I know. Cause there's something about her features that's really distinct and amazing. And, yeah. and the way the show is shot, I love those scenes when she's playing chess on the ceiling and mm-hmm. you see like yeah. the shadow of the pieces. It's just, it's such a cool way to do it. I, I, I loved the show. So yeah, and there is great. a Star Wars connection. The, the cowboy, cowboy, cat bane of chess that's there, that little kid that was also uh-huh. in Game of Thrones. Yeah. He was in The Force Awakens. He in a cameo uh, when, like, the, the control ship, when Poe and Finn are escaping the Star Destroyer, he did a cameo as the technician there on the, on the, on the chip that gets blown up half a second later. How do you know this? Because I, I, I drink and I <laughs> because know Because he things. runs to Wikipedia every time he sees something new. <laughs> It's like Wikipedia and Wikipedia are like, you know, <laughs> always. Open I didn't know he was from Game of Thrones. I was wondering where I saw that person. So that must yeah. be it. Yeah, I think it is, yeah. Well, those so people they- that like Michael Sarah syndrome, which just like they get older, but they just stay the same. <laughs> <laughs> Michael Sarah syndrome. <laughs> I've not heard that before. <laughs> just, just made it up. Oh, my because God. That's but what happens so- when you drink coffee and not wine. True. <laughs> so nanny i have a question for you because you just finished season three uh-huh. the night sisters arc i just need a an opinion the night sisters was great i mean that entire arc was so good i mean i was already a huge fan of ventress to begin with mm-hmm. but then when you see her among her sisters and everything that's going on it's so good and then the the dichotomy of like half the planet being of the night sisters and then the other half the race that is Darth Maul's people and the men that are supposed to be you know inferior to the females and kind of like their slaves it was it was such a good play on all of that i like l- love that i already loved the show and i feel <laughs> but when very, you saw that arc <laughs> i feel spoiled i don't remember how i did it cuz it was it aired what probably 10 years ago somewhere yeah, maybe not quite seasons. that long Around, but yeah. I got tickets to see those those three episodes in a movie theater. Like it was this whole thing. Like I got a Savage Opress poster, and like that was this, that that season. Everything changed. Like they yeah. they got new character models and all that. And I just remember, like I went and saw uh, the Clone Wars, the original movie, in the movie theater. Okay. And then I saw that, which just feels like a movie. And I was like, oh my god, this yeah. is on TV. Unreal. It was so good. Yeah. And I I'm sure that plays part in why I love it so much. But that story I have seen that arc. So I go back to that so many times. It I mean, just... it's so amazing. I mean, that the transition of like Savage Opress, the character that he is at the beginning, and then just yep. like this monster that he becomes. And then, you know, obviously the name drop at the it's end. The like you have to go find Darth Maul now. Fence. And it's yeah. like, oh my God. So, yeah. Yeah. And so, I was speaking not of on which mode did you get your black then. series? I did not get my black series. I'll buy. I, 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 I'll, I'm, I'll buy I'm, it for I'm, you. If you don't hurry up, because you need. I'm, I'm, I'm glad. I'm glad, <laughs> Brian, you brought that up because <laughs> it's interesting. That's the arc where at least so so I binge watched the whole Clone Wars. Mm-hmm. Uh, the time I binge watched it was a time where I was just like, you know, I would just go to work and meditate all day and then watch the Clone yeah. Wars. So I was at this state of mind where. I just, everything was just flowing naturally. And I saw this arc and I remember the moment, the baptism where Asajj Ventress goes in and then comes out. At that moment, I was just like on the couch and then this internal size comes, I I just comes out of me. It's like, "Ah, I wish I was a woman. That was my first thought. And then my inner voice just kind of like the same as she came out, it was like, but you are. And then I, I, I swear, I was like, I just, I had to pause. I had to wait. What? Like, I blew my own mind. I was like, what is happening I here? I can imagine. Like, but then it was like, I was just watching a puzzle like this. And then, whoop. Oh, it all makes mm-hmm. sense. Like, <laughs> everything I've gone through all my life, like, all my experiences, like, everything just adds up. And I was like, holy crap. Like. Like I, as I'm speaking, I'm like, I got, oh. I got goosebumps. Like I don't know if it's gonna be seen, but I have goosebumps. Oh, we need the 4K cameras for that. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> uh, yes, for our poor, poor 1080 cameras. But yes, uh, it is, it is a transition point in Star Wars. It is where oh. 
and 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 Nani, you brought that up. It's like we I, I, at least that I was under that view world that you know either you're a man and you see mm -hmm. life one way or you're female and you see mm -hmm. life the other way and it, it it just clicked like wait this there's can be just as like a symbiotic relationship they can both can coexist and eventually flourish within themselves mm. so thank you for bringing that because I, to me asash was that character where I've always felt like that connection, but it wasn't until that moment that it, I was just like, like, wait, Star Wars can be this dip and blow my mind. <laughs> That's beautiful. Thank you yeah. for sharing that. That's no, oh, of course, really beautiful. And you know, I mean, that show. Anyway, I'm not. <laughs> and Asajj was never <laughs> the same after that either. Like yeah. she was never the same. She was. She was a. A lot of. I mean, anger drives her obviously as a character, mm -hmm. but I feel like before that episode, it was, I'm angry and I don't know why, but I'm mm -hmm. just angry mm -hmm. and very similar yeah, to very the story similar. you just shared. And now, and then like all, and now she knows why Yeah, and not that anger is ever the answer, but like mm -hmm. she, she, she had a purpose that she didn't have before. Mm -hmm. Um, right. Which it, I'm it very. Transformed, I, it transformed, because anger as any emotions can be a tool. It mm -hmm. transforms how she relates to that tool. Just as in my case, it was depression. I had no idea I was depressed. Like, but it transforms that viewpoint. Doesn't mean the depression goes away. It just means you can now handle it better. It just mm -hmm. means you can relate to it from a different perspective. And I think that's what that was key. Mm -hmm. Like all her life, she was just this is how you act. Yep. Count Dooku was adamant, like, this is the Sith way. And then all of a sudden, it's like, wait, my, my world opens up. And I can be I can be that combination of Sith, Night Sister. I can play with that. Like, that's yep. the beauty of that evolution. Yeah, 100%. I mean, I we're, we're going to get into it, and we'll, we'll go back to Clone Wars, <laughs> because, like, uh, <laughs> but I always loved Ahsoka, or uh, Ventress, because I feel like she's the other side of Ahsoka. She's the same coin about to on say the that. other yep. side. Yeah. Like, and it's, Ahsoka goes through the same thing. Mm -hmm. I yep. can be more than this thing that you've put on me forever, which I'm sure we'll talk about all sorts of things. But I, like, <laughs> after Mandalorian Chapter 10, I'm like, oh but, my God, I know. Yeah, yeah. Yep. But right. we're about to get a lot. I believe we're about, I mean, anyways, we'll talk. But yeah, I, Ventress is a really, really, really important character. Yeah. I think I am a lifelong, I do not know a world without Star Wars. It is forever and always been my very favorite thing. It is, I've said this stuff before, like I am not a religious person. I've never been that. I never had a door to walk into or a book to read. But that's Star Wars for me. Like I'm into Star Wars for all sorts of things, but I mm -hmm. get I'm fascinated at conversations about like like what you just shared, how it affects us on a very deep and personal level. And that's not everyone's Star Wars. And I don't, you know. Oh, yeah. But for me, that's my Star Wars. It is mm -hmm. my it is my guiding light. It's that's just how it's always been. That's um, beautiful. And I love like we were just talking before we recorded. Like Star Wars has been with me in all these major monumental points <laughs> in my life, and I'm just like it's. You know, people say that about God and God's there when they, you know, for me, that's what it is. And it might sound hokey and corny to some people, but like, I mean it very much that way. I love uh, the pew, pew, pews too, but. Yeah, yeah, of course. But there's so much more to Star Wars. Like you were saying, I mean, there is, there is religion in Star Wars. There's philosophy, there's morality, mm -hmm. there's ethics, there's balance, there's politics, mm -hmm. there's yep. families and different kinds of families and, and trying to find, you know, <clears throat> understanding between different races that oftentimes do not understand each other and, yep. you know war and i mean there's there's so much to star wars or aside mm -hmm. from the pew pews which obviously are great as well yep. so yeah i just like clone wars for me is like the the foundation that all of star wars sits upon for me now mm -hmm. like it is it is the thing that i don't know how it could possibly ever be beaten it's just it's mm -hmm. so good there's some duds in there i guess maybe oh. sort of but even in those duds like if you can like there's still stuff there even when there's yeah. three droids it's a nugget yeah yeah you haven't gotten here yet, but you know, when you have three droids that are like wandering aimlessly on a bright yellow planet with nothing to do, there's still, there's <laughs> there's still stuff something there. there. <laughs> there's still a lesson there. There's still, yeah. that's, 
but but so like uh, like on that not to not to like break the or organic nature of how the conversation's going but like i wanted to before we get too deep i, I think it's kind of important for you know everyone listening and for us particularly know where you're coming from brian so like yep. why don't we kind of well we already started but since you kind of seg <laughs> segged into that naturally i wanted to kind of <laughs> delve into that a little bit more like why don't you tell us a little bit more about like your background where you know what you do, how you got into what you do, how you got into Star Wars, all that jazz, so we can you know awesome. get to know you and awesome. keep you know talking some fun Star Wars stuff. So I am a child of the '80s. Uh, Empire Strikes Back was the first movie I ever saw. I was one, so I don't remember it. But <laughs> Return of the Jedi is the first movie I remember ever seeing in the movie theater. Uh, so I grew up with the toys first, and then I remember seeing commercials for the. For, for Return of the Jedi, and I saw it, and I've, I'm, I literally have never left it. Like, people talk about the dark time in the 90s. I never left it. Was, I was just always been there, right? Mm -hmm. uh, so it's great. And then high school came, and the, the special editions came out. I've been on board. There was a, uh, here, I grew up in, in Arizona, and I grew up, like, in the suburbs, but in, in the city, in Phoenix, there was one of those old theaters that just had one screen and it was like yeah. you know, really big the curtains and all that and in the summers they used to play star wars so you know i got to go and there's the people dressing up and it was we watch it all the time yeah it was very interactive and yeah. you know i i mean sometimes i would say i would see whatever one like two or three times in a day because they're only for the weekend and you know you're yeah. a kid you don't have anything better kid, to do yeah so you would just the sit time. there the movie ends, <laughs> starts back up and it's like i'm uh -huh. staying <laughs> get again uh yeah so it's always been there and then i would say we just celebrated um a year we started a podcast pink milk where we talk yeah. star wars queerly <laughs> thank you um yeah and that was really uh we started it because i listened to lots of star wars podcasts watch star wars youtubes and all of those things because i've never had star wars friends before it's always been my own little thing which i remember y'all have talked about those kinds of things before right yeah um yeah. and then so i was like hey this yeah. is a way i connect now is through podcasts and youtube and in the comments or whatever and the great thing about youtube and podcasts is i think you feel like you get to know the people they're your friends you know it's mm -hmm. there's less production it's just very organic and we're all yeah. doing these things because we love it mm -hmm. um and then i got to the point where i'm like i don't hear my voice i don't there isn't any gay people talking and I don't hear Star Wars the way I see it. Mm -hmm. And if I see it this way, like other people have to be out there. Yeah. Yeah, That's they have it. to be. Yeah. So or at least identify the same way. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. And uh I decided to do it with my husband, who is a casual fan at best. <laughs> <laughs> but <laughs> He is like, uh, which makes it so much fun, by the way. Oh, I, I know. I've heard it and I'm like, oh my God. <laughs> <laughs> so nice. I thought that was going to be the thing that was like the thing that caught on, right? I'm like, uh -huh. okay, you know, there's gay people in the world, but not, you know, not as many as people who have to be married to, which I'm so excited that you get to be married to someone who's also a Star Wars nerd. Like, yeah. I don't understand that. <laughs> but I'm like, there has to be people like this that are just like married to like the super nerd who does nothing but talk about Star Wars all the time. And the other one is like, uh-huh. Okay. <laughs> it's like, I'm just going to hear you because I love you. That's it. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. No, like, me and my husband's <laughs> biggest fights have always been about video games, like trying to tell each other how to play it. It's no, you have to play it this way. You're doing this wrong. Like huge fights. That's one. And then the other one is Star Wars. We'll be watching something. It's like, I'm seeing it like, no, you for, you didn't get the point. That's not what that means. This was this. And then we get like seriously pissed at each other. Like you are Empire's wrong. better than Return of the Jedi. God damn it. Yeah. <laughs> no. They, they, Return of the Jedi is the best. It will always be the best. See, oh. see husband, husband, no, husband, husband, husband would, would appreciate that. Yep. <laughs> yeah, my husband thinks Return is the best as well. So <laughs> it is. It is so Star Warsy. Which, oh, anyways. I know. Uh -huh. <laughs> yeah. So then, you know, we thought it would be, and Tom and I have a really, like, honestly, we have a really great relationship. I'm very grateful, and he's the greatest thing ever in the entire world. And we just have a lot of fun together. And I was like, you know, we can make this work because. I don't know. I think we're funny and he thinks we're funny. And so 
<laughs> so we Hilarious. found the time, you know, to hang out once a week. So at least two listeners that think you're funny. Exactly. There we go. You know, I'm arrogant enough. I'll play it on my car on the way to work. Oh, this is great. This is a great show. I love it. <laughs> um, and then so we started in November and uh, then COVID came in March. Yep. And I think that was a hard time because when did y'all start in what? Like May? It was like earlier this year, right? Because I remember March, I think. No, our first us? No, no, no. Oh, we oh, started, oh, sorry, sorry, sorry. No, we started. I thought we were still COVID. Uh, we sorry. started like oh, COVID, two COVID ago. started in March. It was okay. COVID was March. Our first episode was September. No, no, August twenty. Last week of August. Last week of August. Because yeah. I feel like I've chatted with y'all on Twitter before. Because you started a thing beforehand, right? Yes. I, I don't, yes it's twenty twenty. Yes, yes, Time yes, does not exist. Who knows? It's it like the yeah, world it's, between worlds. But, but, but it's, 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 it's the, simultaneously the shortest year and the longest year at the same time. Hundred <laughs> yeah. percent. It's a very strange year. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so it was June. You know, numbers went down for everybody in podcast mm-hmm. land. I think because we're all glued to the news, understandably. And I think there was time to like reflect a little bit on what we were doing. June came, which is Pride Month here. Um, and we had Mark Marquis on, was our first guest. And we're about the same age. We see Star Wars similarly. And we were like halfway through recording. I was like, it dawned on me. I'm like, this is the first time I have ever spoken Star Wars to another queer person. And it was just like, it changed everything. I was like, oh my God, oh, wow. this is so amazing. Like, I don't even think I knew I was missing this, but yeah, clearly I'm missing this. <laughs> um, and then that same month, we, uh, our friends at Blue Bay at the Milk Co. asked us to be on their YouTube channel to talk about found family because we, oh God, I'm such a horrible storyteller. Tom and I are married. Oh, we uh, <laughs> we have three kid children we adopted through the foster system, which are very much a part of our show um, because that was another thing that I wanted to share of there's not a lot of, you know, I think I've learned over this last year that Tom and I are kind of on the forefront. There's gay families yet, but like now that we can legally be married, we can legally adopt children. We can do these things Mm -hmm. uh, easily in the way we probably always should have been able to. That's like another, I wanted to represent another side of, of, of gay life that's out Mm -hmm. there too. Um, So, and, you know, represent foster children the way they should be is, Mm -hmm. which they are not always, (laughs) represented very well so, yeah. um so that was part of the show so we were on blue bantha milk to talk about found family and talking to these two cis white straight dudes and they wanted us on just because we were gay in our experience and i was like oh like i in that mo- i never understood representation matters i probably should have but i just didn't even think about it and here we were on that show i was like oh this is what people are interested in, not the casual fan. And yeah. it really changed the show. And then uh, earlier this year, we did a Mandalorian rewatch, which from the beginning of, of when it started, I found it to be a very queer coded show. Like I am convinced that Din Djarin is queer and a lot of the experience that he feels is, is a very queer, sh- it's, very, it, it's just very queer coded. Mm-hmm. And so we did rewatch with a queer group of round, like a round table uh-huh. of queer people to all talk about the Mandalorian and it really changed everything. I mean, we all, those podcasts were not really about Star Wars. We had five episodes and it was really living life as a queer person in 20. And then it turned out to be in 2020, <laughs> like it was, yeah. uh, and it yeah. changed everything. And we all got very close. We all like bared our souls. They were really, really good podcasts. And I think- Did you guys know each other before starting it? Mm-hmm. Or just like through- wow. Nope. Twitter, it was one of the great Twitter things Twitter. that Twitter did. <laughs> You know, really, um, I knew Mark because he was on on our show. And then I learned there was other gay people who had podcasts, but I didn't know that's what they were doing. And I don't think, and they don't put it out there the same way we do. Like that's okay. very much what the show is built around. Mm-hmm. Um, anyways, yeah. And then those things really changed. I think I think we found a much bigger audience in doing those. And I think mm-hmm. it's because we were all just really honest. I mean, I've never cried so much in my entire life, but <laughs> we did. And they were really, really, really that's, great. That's cathartic. Mm. Yeah. yeah. And now uh, two of us, Mark P. 
and Emma and myself, so I guess three of us, have a live stream every Friday, uh, Pink Milk After Dark, which is that's on like yeah. 11 p.m. <laughs> on Friday nights, <laughs> Eastern time, uh, because Emma and I both have are asleep by then. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's got to be after bedtime, after kids' bedtimes. Okay. Um, so you can be uh, and then, yeah, everything. Exactly. <laughs> so we talk about Star Wars queerly there too, but they're super fans as well. So then we get to kind of get dig a little deeper. Nerd out then, completely. Yeah. Where yeah. Tom and I don't get to do that. But <laughs> yeah. I think I think that's great though, in terms of like your perception of representation in Star Wars, because I feel kind of the same way in a in a sense of not being aware of mm -hmm. needing that representation in Star Wars because like I'm more cognizant of it now especially from my my point of view which is yeah. more of the Latino representation because yeah. uh, particularly growing up like I didn't feel that need because since I personally you know grown up with Star Wars and you know American TV and whatnot like I never that never clicked in my mind yeah. the the need to like have that type of person that looks like me being on screen it was only like fairly recently that i'm like oh wait shit, there aren't many latinos there and like i do want to see those latinos so like that my my journey in that sense has been a little different from other people because i know other latinos have had different perceptions of that but they're like well when they saw cassie and you know diego luna in yeah. rogue one for the first time i was like oh shit, you know like uh, finally someone that sounds like me is yeah. there I, I i didn't i never really went through that with star wars because i kind of feel it's kind of odd because I still felt, you know, Luke Skywalker was my yeah. hero and I didn't need him to look like me. But like now being very cognizant of those things, I'm very in favor, obviously, of yeah. the representation matters thing. So, you know, it's kind of like your thing. Like I want to make that like a big topic of conversation in, yeah. you know, with the, mm -hmm. in the discourse, which I feel yeah. sometimes gets buried in a ways. Uh, but I, I don't know, Mo and Nani, if you had like something to add about representation in Star Wars. Well, I mean, now they're trying to fix it kind of because you can see a lot of that now in The Mandalorian, like mm -hmm. a lot of, you know, having all these different alien cultures and actually giving them, you know, a background, a language and importance within the system and for them to have really interact with these characters because you but always have- they're still have... On, the, on the side though. Not as much as they used to be. I mean, it has true, to progress. True, you can't true, just true. suddenly like change the focus completely. It has to be gradual. I mean, you always had true. the aliens, but they were- mostly ignored like they were like mm -hmm. they were you know other. in a bar dancing and you yeah. didn't know what they were talking about or doing but they now you props. actually yeah. yeah and now you see them actually you know having more to say into the conversation being big, bigger characters mm -hmm. in the in the episodes so mm -hmm. i mean gradually it's changing and i think it will continue to change because i think people mm -hmm. are really starting to notice that representation does matter i mean all that adds to the story so i mean, I, th I, I think the reason it matters the most it's because we can't imagine what we don't know. Yeah. We as 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 humans, you know, if I've never seen a phone, I have no yeah. idea how to. You don't know you need it. Yeah. I don't know. I don't know. I need it. I don't know exactly. So the same thing with representation, you know, and this happened as we grew up. You know, you're mm -hmm. we're kids. We see these movies. We don't realize that we miss the representation because it's it just yeah. never is. But it does create. A vacuum, yeah. Absolutely. A vacuum that nothing else fills it. It's a vacuum mm -hmm. that, you know, either you just—I mean, depending on you know different lives, depending on your life, it's going to be a bigger vacuum, smaller vacuum, you know. Mm -hmm. But mm -hmm. the fact still remains that the less representation, the more you're depriving somebody else from mm -hmm. finding that inner mm -hmm. voice that will actually make them bring out. Their, their best version of themselves, which will eventually trickle down to how how do I see my the best version of myself? So that's yeah. I think that's where you're not only as oh I, I can see this character and feel like their pain or what they're going through because I I felt that same pain or I felt that same journey, mm -hmm. but the other side is like well if I I've never felt that pain or journey, but I don't see anybody represented that goes through it mm -hmm. how am i supposed to envision what you're suffering or what you're going through mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. so that's where representation really matters in my case mm -hmm. i agree you know and we changed too when when michael came michael was our second child who came 
and and his brother Eli. They're both uh, Hispanic, and mm-hmm. they don't look like us, you know. Mm-hmm. Uh, and there's a realization in that of they're going to experience a life that I mm-hmm. I cannot relate to. That I don't know what that is like, and I wish it wasn't going to matter. And no one, you know, mm-hmm. it shouldn't matter, but it's going to matter. And yeah. so I've got to figure out how to use my ears differently than I used to and try to let, you know, take my experience and, and try to see it that way, you know, and they're little now, they don't know anything yet, but one day they will. Yeah. <laughs> and, you yep. know, I'm heartbroken for that day when something happens. Um, so that, you know, our family yeah, does not look like anybody, you know, doesn't look like most families and, and that's all right. And I'm, I'm happy to see all these new things for them. Because like mm-hmm. you were saying, if we didn't, we didn't know we were missing it because it wasn't even there. And I don't want my kids to have to not see it yep. anymore. Um, which, 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 I don't know. I, I'm, I feel like it seems like an exciting thing, at least. I, I'm going to add this and I'm going to ask you, yeah. like, is it exciting to know that you have like this journey to like understand them as they grow up? Like, like how, yeah. how, how does that trickle down consciously as you treat them? Like, do you see that or is it just? So, you know, Tom and I are, we're really open parents. We're very transparent about things. Uh, you know, we, we're aware and they were, you know, Jack was seven when he came, Michael was four and Eli was six. So they, we were just talking about this actually, because Emma, who's on Peak Milk After Dark had, had a child from birth. And so like her experience with her child is very different. So now we're starting to talk about that a lot uh, through Mandalorian, because that's one of the ways I very much relate to Mando. Mm -hmm. Um, And, you know, I don't know what it's like to have an infant. I don't know what it's like to have a child Mm -hmm. from, I don't know that experience. I don't have that experience. I don't know what it is. Um, But like specifically with like, and it's more Michael, because he looks the most different, which I know that probably sounds really terrible to say, but like, it's just. <laughs> but it's the truth. I, but, it yeah. has but, to be accepted. But, but, but yeah. the, the yeah. most different from at least the from, media has represented. Yeah, from what's yeah. normal and different. Yeah. Um, it's, it's really difficult because, uh-oh. <laughs> <laughs> because we, I don't, we don't want to introduce anything yet because they're so little. I don't want to make them, you know, self-conscious about anything, but we're also trying our best to. (laughs) Sorry, that was my genius husband dropping a bottle of alcohol. (laughs) (laughs) Husbando, we we all need a husband that just brings, brings the alcohol. (laughs) Yeah, he brings me, you know, my libations and. (laughs) The best IT department ever. I know. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> I'm sorry for the interruption. Oh, Continue. Yeah, no, no, no. <laughs> but yeah, so I, I am excited. You know, we're trying to figure out how to walk it. You mm-hmm. know, I don't want to present anything. You know, we yeah. like even with with having two dads, that was, you know, the first the first step that we had to take. And and with Jack, we were, you know, when we were when he was first came when he was younger, we're like, you know, just some people might have something to say about it. And, and if someone asks if you have two dads, your answer is no, actually I have three because you have three dads. So that's how you first handle that. And then just embrace it. Like mm-hmm. we're not those, we chose to not raise our kids that way. Like that is the real world. And they're gonna get asked on the playground. They're mm-hmm. going to get teased, yep. sadly. So yep. we were just like, if we just arm you with like mm-hmm. ahead of time, and I've seen them and they're all of them. Like Jack is still, you know, our oldest is quieter about it. You know, he tried, mm-hmm. but that's him too. And then there's Michael who was our second child, but he's the youngest okay. and he can't wait to tell him, by the way, I have two dads. And he's just very <laughs> excited, excited about, about yes, it. Yes, he's Super very like, yes. excited because he loves it. I know like he, he knows it's different. Yeah. But he it's loves like it. Two dads. Uh-huh. That is and- so cute. Oh my God. <laughs> Yeah, I was at the playground with him the other day and some of the girls were just like, you can't have two dads. Like, oh no, you can have two oh, you dads. Can. You can have three dads. I have three dads. You can have two moms. Sometimes, you know, if they're just parents and as long as they love you, it's always like, oh, you're so cute. You have the cutest that little is, boys. It's like, so oh, this cool. is fantastic. Yeah. 
Well, it sounds like you you both are doing a great job. Yeah, okay. it does. We do our best. <laughs> We're I mean, very which lucky. Speaks, which speaks to me to the power of not only like, you know, uh, education, but also representation. Because like if mm -hmm. children start seeing that from a very young age, then it kind of nor obviously normalizes things that are normal and yeah. that shouldn't be discriminated mm -hmm. against. Mm -hmm. So uh, tying it back to the whole Star Wars thing is like if you start seeing the representation of these different, you know, ways of life that yeah. other people live then people that are growing up have less bigotry yes. less, you know less uh, reasons to discriminate because it's mm -hmm. like oh yeah this is like a normal thing that i'm seeing even though even if i'm not seeing it directly you know next to me yeah yep. if that makes yeah. sense well because discrimination is taught and it's learned you don't inherently yep. discriminate and if you see more representation you're less likely to grow up being a bigot yep. <laughs> you know right, so yeah. That was something that we learned too. We're like, you know, our kids are now part of our community, regardless who they choose mm -hmm. to love later in life. They are now mm -hmm. inherently a part of our, and that was something that I don't think we understood before we had kids, but it was mm -hmm. later. I was like, oh, no, they're here. No matter, no matter what the future brings, like they're a part of it now. And so we got to make sure they're, they're comfortable with everything, you know? But that's like, I mean, honestly, congrats to the three of you too for this podcast. Like, this is why <laughs> things are important. Like, you share your unique lens. And if I've learned anything over this last year is people right now, <laughs> and that's one good thing that I think, honestly, there's been a lot of garbage that came out of this last four years, but I think something <laughs> yeah. good that came out of it was, <laughs> yeah, it brought out the worst in people. Yeah. But it also brought out people who's like, who may have been quiet. Yeah. yeah. And they're like, mm -hmm. oh, if I'm quiet, I'm going to be, they're yeah. going to lump me over there. And that's not. Mm -hmm. And so mm -hmm. I always try to look at my, you know, my pink milk glass full, half full. And I'm yeah. like, you know, it brought out that side of things too. Mm -hmm. And people are, I think there are a lot of people who are actively looking for a podcast, looking for things that are different mm -hmm. than the, because they want to learn. Yeah. They don't want to sound like, you know, the people with their guns during the thing that are now upset that, <laughs> their life has been ruined they don't want to be that so they're like i have to take on mm -hmm. that role this is on me this yeah. is nobody else and it's i can on no me. longer be ignorant and i need to yeah. do something about this so nope. yeah i agree with you on that as well i mean i i'm grateful for trump for that if there's anything yeah. i'm grateful mm -hmm. that he brought that out oh. on people yeah <laughs> you know uh, absolutely you know, mm -hmm. if if the silver lining is that everything that was undercover that was just mm -hmm. horrid and putrid in our mm -hmm. country you know it got exposed and, yep. and you need sunlight, you need, you need mm -hmm. air for yep. things to get clean yep. again. Mm -hmm. Like it's, I think that's the silver lining mm -hmm. of it all. Like, I agree with that. Like, you know, at yeah. least we see what's bad with us and we mm -hmm. know what's the next step we can take. Mm -hmm. yeah. yep. Especially like, at least from my perspective and, you know, being a newbie in Twitter dumb, uh, <laughs> seeing, seeing, seeing the Star Wars, <laughs> I mean, I always knew that Star Wars community is a, uh, intense in their opinions <laughs> but at least in my perspective growing up it was always like oh the prequels suck and the, the ot is the best that was kind of always my perspective on how star wars is controversial mm -hmm. uh, but being on the twitter verse it's actually been interesting Brian, especially how you were saying how all these political opinions have been bubbling up to the surface especially this year it's kind of seen like a lot of people how they tie I mean, obviously we do it too, to an extent, right? Uh, their identity to Star Wars, but like how their focus is very, very particular. Yep. Uh, and using Star Wars, which has always been this inclusive, you know, franchise and always, you know, George Lucas has never made any secrets. What, you know, that he was left-leaning and liberal and had, you know, yep. very <laughs> anti-imperialistic and anti-fascist points of view, which he was trying to convey through the saga and kind of see how people have taken their political opinions and made them vocal and then use Star Wars to, you know, kind of project them and then gatekeep the fandom is kind of very odd to me because it's like, well, you're kind of going against what this whole game is about, man. Mm -hmm. So I, in, a, in a way, like you say, I'm kind of thankful for that because it's like, I, you know, I don't have time for that. I don't have time yeah. for activity or mm -hmm. exclusion. I just want to, you know, inclusion and positivity yeah. so it's been it's definitely been been an interesting journey through social yeah. media for star wars for sure <laughs> yeah i was a newbie too i was not really i think i made it an account 
like 10 years ago or something, but never used to it. <laughs> yeah. No. And then I made something for the podcast knowing the, and, and it was, it was a learning experience. <laughs> it was a definite <laughs> learning experience after I saw the rise of Skywalker. I was like, Oh, cause I love the end. If there's anything about that movie, like I, love that ending I love the epilogue like I love it I love it and I was just on Twitter and I was emotional wreck and then like, everybody oh. started hating yeah I was like oh oh people hate this and I still <laughs> yeah I I am still a dumb dumb because I am like I know I'm a unique person I like to actively go find people who think very differently than me because mm. I I enjoy that that yeah. makes you grow I, yeah. I enjoy it and not everyone does and I'm not like there's no one way or the other way but like I need to learn that Twitter is not engaging in that way like I am not yeah. like negativity thrives on Twitter I mean, I've yeah. made mistakes I've like chimed in on people's things like not yeah. from a bad place but I can certainly mm -hmm. see why they would think I might be coming from a bad mm -hmm. place judging by the whole I'm like oh god this is not like it's an invitation for a platform it's an yeah. it's an invitation for statements and i'm like i'm yeah. still trying to get there <laughs> no but it's it's interesting that you framed it that way especially with rise of skywalker because i mean as if you probably heard of other episodes you know that we are not the biggest fans of that movie yeah. uh, but like i always find that that discourse is super interesting because mm -hmm. i mean obviously in jest amongst us will you know talk negatively right about no. the things we don't like but it doesn't at least personally, and I, you guys chime in if you disagree, but like it doesn't consume our lives and we don't have to like go out and attack people that disagree with us. Yeah. It's like more productive to like, okay, well, if you like it, well, why? And then have yeah. that discussion and debate it. But like, mm -hmm. especially with this whole, and it's interesting because some of the people that dislike Price of Skywalker mm -hmm. are people that were super Last Jedi fans and were, you know, literally uh, criticizing the behavior that Last Jedi fans haters yeah. had yeah. and then they turn around and they acted the like that, that yeah they become yeah. the thing that they hate it's just like hey man i mean you can like and you can hate whatever you want but you don't have to go out and you know attack Be hostile people. about yeah. it yeah this is yeah. like people's opinions are fine about media as long as long as it's you know doesn't align attack with somebody. Align. <laughs> but, but it's it's interesting because what I don't know. I, why will you get offended when it's like the other way around? Like, wait, mm -hmm. I have the opportunity to see what I've missed yeah. in the first round. Like, mm -hmm. and, and even in this podcast, like, yeah. I, we've, we have all changed opinions at times. Like, oh, know, yeah. Like, we've had conversations oh. where we're like, oh, this is what I think. And then somebody else says it. And, and then we chime in, like, I think you might have changed my opinion right. about and, it. And, you and, know, and, as and you why? talk, I mean, that's how conversation happens. You don't necessarily need to just attack one sidedly. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I mean, films are not supposed to be completely black and white. They're made to be interpreted, you know, in certain ways. So mm -hmm. if this movie might mean something to you in a different way that it means something to me. Mm -hmm. So I, and that's what's great about film in general. And I think especially Star Wars, because Star Wars speaks, speaks so strongly to some people. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And, and it's also very bad when they nitpick, like, you know, just the smallest detail that don't really have anything to do with the story at large. Yeah. It's like... Yeah. Why does that matter? If they I mean, got some little... can be fun if you make it about fun, but if you make I know, life but if you make it about hating on it, yeah. <laughs> like, come on, it's... It's space wizards with a dog in the cockpit, and like, <laughs> yeah. you can move things with your mind. Yeah, make it easy, bro. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. That's one of the things right now. We were just talking about this last week with Twitter. That, like I said, I don't understand how to how it works, but like I feel yes. <laughs> And I don't mean this to be like, again, I'm not right and they are wrong, but like, I yeah. feel people are very quick to mute words and hit the block button. And I think about someone who may have blocked someone. And again, like I, I've mentioned this here. The truth of the matter is I'm a 40 year old white dude who sometimes is conservative. I certainly can look conservative, especially when I get my fresh, like high end tights. And, you know, like I, I can, I can present <laughs> one way. Right. And then I might speak yeah. and the purse might fall out. Mm -hmm. And I can see instantly how a crowd or how a room or how a person can change the way they treat me. And that mm -hmm. is a privilege yeah. that I have. And I am recognizing that kind of thing, right? I look at my Twitter picture on, I'm like, okay, well, <laughs> I just think I look good. And, uh, but I can also see how I might just look like a very aggressive, straight 40 something white dude who's <laughs> over here, like 
talking to people about Star Wars. So we know what that looks like. And I'm like, okay, I, I have to own, I have to own that. I have to but, own my privileges. <laughs> yes, exactly. Like, but when someone blocks immediately, yeah, they are ruining an opportunity that maybe what they said changed someone. So now in their head, they're just content they're they're reaffirming the idea that no one can change. And I that's disappointing. You know, it's just disappointing because now you're you're look, I'm old enough to have seen we've got a long way to go. I'm not yeah. we'll we'll talk about this, I'm sure, when we talk about some of our favorite characters, because there's a moment. But I'm old enough to know to see how much things can change. Yeah. We've spoken about we were talking on the round the round tables about about Twitter and how people feel. And I remember in the late nineties coming out, let's not pretend it was the mid nineties when I was coming out (laughs) (laughs) and like, (laughs) and the internet was the safe place to go to. Like, that's where you went to figure it all out. That's where Mm -hmm. you went to ask the questions. Cause I'm like, (laughs) and it is so opposite now. Like it's, I remember going, you know, I wish I I can't wait for everyone to like the world to come together because now we're going to let people have a conversation with someone on the other side of the world. It's going to be this really freeing thing. And I, it should be that it has yeah. every ability to be that yeah but I just like I get disappointed with that like I well I guess very fringe to a degree because because of what you said the muting mm-hmm. and the blocking people just stay isolated in their bubbles yeah. and and that's what when when we get to that where instead of being liberating it's actually yep. like a prison in a way because everyone's just within the prison of their thought bubble and you just you know antagonizing everyone else's opinion and not mm-hmm. needing to hear it although I will say there are some opinions that we don't need to hear <laughs> and again see i will argue that sometimes those voices need to get out to bring those people who would otherwise be oh quiet. well yes yeah. yes so like True. amplify it all you want gina amplify it all you want because <laughs> shots fired you're bringing a lot back you're bringing a lot of people who are like oh no not okay yeah. nope I've seen those peg warmer action figures on the on the on the on the pegs, and I normally don't ever want to see a Star Wars peg warmer, let alone a female character, because we all know what that struggle has been through. But there is a little part of me that's very happy to see Cara Dune action figures sitting there collecting dust. <laughs> it's so it's so it's so dis- it's so disappointing. I mean, I'm not because you know it's, it it kind of gets into the weeds of what you were saying about not discriminating against people's, you know, points of view about some things and being able to learn about it. But on the other hand, it's kind of like, you know, there are some opinions that just inherently are detrimental to other groups of people. Yes. And when yeah. you, when you see those types of things, it's just like, well, I can't, you know, I can't, I can't go down that route, man. I would go full path. Man. You're going down a path. I can't follow. <laughs> it's just, so it's, 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 it's very, it's kind of, it's a kind of ideological, an inner ideological struggle right of being like okay well i want to be open and accepting to opposing ideas but to but, but when you see that those ideas are about exclusion and misinformation or whatever some people are yep. into it's just like well i can't i can't advocate it and like here's the unfollow i won't outright block well, but unfollow <laughs> yes i was i will unfollow all day long yeah, yeah. <laughs> and then like and then sometimes you know you can go peek if you need to see what's going yeah, on, what's I'll going on and how bad yeah, it is. Yeah. Like, yeah. hey. Because, <laughs> yes, I mean, come on. There are collective things we all know, like, are just wrong and evil. There's like no, <laughs> there is no different points of view around certain subjects. We all know that's yes. out there. And yeah, I don't know. I think it's an interesting thing. Like, I think Star Wars talks about that. Like, I mean, yeah. mm-hmm. there's a few characters that are all about that. And I, you know, which, the... which is interesting from, a, from, looking at the fan fans perspective some fans that like bitch and moan about inclus- inclusion in star wars i mean like oh this sjw agenda it's just like man i mean what's your what's your issue with having oh look at that guy uh, yeah. <laughs> what's your what's your issue of having like people that look different be included in the franchise when everyone else looks like you just because one character looks different you're gonna shout and yell at this guy and like claim that this is some sjw agenda and like what is this? It's just like, we don't have to force inclusion. It's just like, then why are you forcing, no offense, why are you forcing whiteness then? Male yeah. whiteness into yeah. us then. It's just like, can't you see this, the cognitive dissonance? It's just like, just, we're doing baby steps. We're not even like shoving, yeah. you know, all of these uh, <laughs> SJW things down your mouth. We're just trying to be inclusive and that's always Start, a positive. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Love is love. Love is love until that love looks okay. kind of like me. Yeah. But I don't want to love like that. Then all of a sudden I have a problem. Why does that? Yeah. Love is love, but you don't need to show it. 
I can yeah. say it, but don't show it to me because now you're. I don't yeah. understand you're, that. You're like, okay as long yeah. as it's. Yeah, I don't. I don't yeah. understand yeah. putting yeah. the yeah. butts let's, in. If you're doing a statement, don't add a butt to it. That's it. Just if you're saying a statement, leave it at that. Or, 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 what, what, or, or then whatever, don't say the or statement. Whatever is said before the butt doesn't matter. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. Yeah. It just invalidates so, the argument. I mean, because yeah. I was, I was saying, who was it? I think it was. Uh, I don't know. I forgot which Twitter Twitterer was doing this, but they were putting uh, screenshots from when the prequels came out of mm -hmm. like the some of the complaints that people were having even back then about oh the liberal agenda having like a strong female protagonist or like having people of color. It's like oh what is this? Even back then, it was like people still yeah. have the same the same comments that they're having now, which is like so we technically haven't really gotten that far as a society because we're still talking about the same things. And that's why I think Star Wars is so interesting because it's doing like those, it's always been doing those things, but it kind of amplifies the culture, right? That we're kind of struggling to go against yeah. in some way. Yep. And I think it's kind of in a way the fault of St Star Wars not being as vocal as Star Trek. And this is one yeah. place where I'll give Star Trek some kudos. Star Trek has always mm -hmm. been very vocal about its intentions, mm -hmm. about what it's mm -hmm. trying to do. And mm -hmm. it obviously, because they're making that statement, it doesn't allow for interpretation uh, around the fandom of being like, yes, we are advocating for mm -hmm. inclusion and representation. As opposed to Star Wars, since it's kind of like, oh, we're just going to kind of put these characters here, but not, we're not really going to address those issues. It kind of allows for fandoms and people to interpret what they want and just take what they want and run with it yeah and spin it however they want exactly. conveniently but, but, for them but, yeah, but that's exactly. but that's the, that's an interesting yeah. uh, and there's there's something that just clicked it can be completely wrong but uh <laughs> that could be the difference between star trek being a story and star wars being a myth yes like, yes a myth mm -hmm. you you don't you, do, you cannot spell everything out it yeah. has to just be there mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and the symbol and then once mm -hmm. you know oh a person that identifies with that symbol, then they yeah. can bring it out. It's almost mm -hmm. like you're uncovering instead of like, oh, here it is. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, which, yeah. which, I, I, I don't know. I don't know anything about Star Trek fandom. Yeah. Oh, neither do I. I don't know. Yeah. I would assume that they are on. You know that they get it. It's like, oh well. I, but but that's I'm a, a, like, maybe like, there's some they, bigots and they're like, they, well, I like Star Trek, yeah. but like uh, that, that's a good question. <laughs> do go they, do they take it as this or are they? still as adamant of like, oh, there's my viewpoint and that's it. I don't know. That's a good question. That, that, that brings a good. I love what you just said though, like about the myth part of it, because it's what we love about it. Mm -hmm. And if you get too specific, you're taking away part of. Yeah. The magic. The magic. Mm -hmm. But then because it's so big and important, it needs to say something. <laughs> We're in an interesting time. Like it's the truth. Yeah. It's, it's, yeah. it's, it is not, I don't envy. I don't envy star wars for or i don't i'm sorry i don't generally like like well let's you know if we want to talk about like the frog mom situation i don't it yeah, was more exactly. lucasfilm's reaction that i yes. think most people had the problem with if they just if they just said you know well, what they have zero social media game let's be honest about yeah it. <sighs> they're yeah, terrible no doubt. at addressing like, that is not how we intended it we apologize if we offended any of mm -hmm. you you know I can see how you'd come to those conclusions and we are sorry. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I think so a lot just... of it could have been squashed, especially yeah. knowing what was coming up next. Yeah. Because we just saw that progression mm -hmm. in a character in the next episode. They could have even said, you know what? Wait till the next episode. <laughs> like, which, which... wait, wait. I, I, I have a hot take on that. I think okay. it's shorter mm -hmm. because they actually it. deleted some scenes. You oh. think they deleted scenes? Maybe yes. like you the, think the, maybe Yoda so, ate an egg in that episode. So 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 the and, and and it's very weird because the scenes where baby Yoda takes a glance at the eggs, then there's nothing, which was very mm -hmm. different from the last episode. Every time baby Yoda took a glance, egg will appear at some point in his in baby Yoda's hands. Mm -hmm. I don't know. I, I it, it just seemed like it was maybe. Like, it, I mean, honestly, a there's a possibility. One because it has been the shortest episode so far. Two, because there was such a reaction to him eating yep. those eggs. Like, people freaked out. Well, they, they canceled so. a Funko that had, like, a baby Yoda grabbing the yeah. eggs. So, yeah. oh, do we? we had those in the office. 
<laughs> so I work uh, for a record store chain. Like it's pretty, it's a pretty mm-hmm. big chain. We're one okay. of the bigger ones, right? And because we're a music store, we also now have to sell everything else under the sun. Of course. <laughs> but we have a ton Especially of Funko, Funko Pops, Pops, right? <laughs> yeah. And before the episode came out, we got a shipment in a Funko box saying Baby Yoda with the container. And you, get it, you get it, you get it, thought, you get yeah. it before they, they are, oh, I, the just, scoop I assumed it was the ice cream maker that something, I don't know, I was like, I, whatever, and then I was like, oh, okay, interesting, like that was one of those things I got myself in trouble for, because mm-hmm. that episode I identified with so much, which we talked about last week on mm-hmm. Kiki Waffle, like I yep. identified with that episode so much as a father with, mm-hmm. as an adoptive father, as a father mm-hmm. with children with trauma like the scene that was the cute scene with baby yoda running into his arms like there was so much more to that like i was a wreck like an absolute wreck uh i contained myself on that the next morning i recorded that episode with my husband and And it's like i remember the disclaimer (laughs) uh but so like then i saw that that reaction it was the same thing that i felt in the rise of skywalker because i had such a personal connection to ray choosing of a last name like i like so many emotions about that right mm-hmm. i have lots of feelings about the movie as a whole but that part like i love it mm. and then like then it's not that i'm mad that anybody else has like a different yeah. take but i'm like to me i'm someone who like if I don't like this show, give me something that I want yeah. because I want to love it all. I don't want mm-hmm. to not like it. And, but that's what I was saying. It's not a conver- it's not an invite for a conversation. It is a statement. I'm mm-hmm. yeah. My old self needs to hurry up and get with the program because <laughs> I need to figure that out real quick. And that's mm-hmm. fine. Like that's fine. I'm, you know, but. Well, know. and then actually going back to that Mandalorian episode, I think one of the problems was they focus so much on the eggs. They missed yeah, the point they- of the episode entirely. It, and yep. And it's this comparison of what you were saying, the the comparison of different types of parenthood. You have the lady frog who has the eggs who aren't even fertilized yet. So they aren't actually her children yet. I mean, they're just eggs, you know, unfertilized eggs and her protection over them. And she's going to see them through from the beginning, like from Mm -hmm. eggs in a container. And then you have Mando as an adoptive father Mm -hmm. with Mm -hmm. baby Yoda who doesn't even understand how to be a kid really yet. And, you know, so yeah. it, it was this just beautiful thing they did in this episode. And I think people are missing the point and not seeing. Well, all the- I mean, I, I think people see the point. I just think that like mm-hmm. they're they're and, and rightly so. I mean, I'm not going to take away every, anyone's mm-hmm. feelings away from yeah. what hurts them. Uh, but like, I totally understand, like, why they get upset with the whole egg thing, because it's, you know. I, I don't even know how to describe it. I just know that, like, I, I, I get it. Well, it's, yep. it's because the symbolism is so, yeah. and they so keep playing it for jokes. It's not like it was a one and done thing. It was just it kept. It was a gag. It was a gag, and I, and I get it. Like once, maybe it would have been like okay, kind of funny, but I think they did it like three times. And I, once, once, like I kept reading the discourse, I understood, and especially after what you said, Brian, seeing the response from Lucasfilm, it wasn't really Lucasfilm. It was, uh, Bill, I think yeah. Bill shows that. Well, then, then uh, Pablo Hidalgo so be- goes on there and starts double downing on some of that stuff. Was- yeah, I mean, but I, well, we can talk about Pablo yeah. <laughs> later because I have my thoughts stuff. on the Pablo thing too. <laughs> okay, but awesome. it's kind of like then taking that and amplifying it mm-hmm. more, even though it wasn't a company statement. I think that's where I think people gets to get too hung up on, like okay. some person that happens to work there having an opinion and taking it as company policy. I was like, well, it's just some, some guy, just like you. <laughs> yep. It happens to work as Lucas. I'm talking about that. So I think that that's that, that point. reaction, that. yeah. that's but, one but, reaction but, but, that I'm like, hey, come on, let's, let's take it down. Now. <laughs> but I do understand the controversy and I'm there. I mean, oh, I, no, I get I it. <laughs> yep. Yep. But, but, but that's, that's a valid point. Uh, if you have a story where you rely on characters mm-hmm. and those characters being actual people do their outside voices influence their mm-hmm. character which is in, in theory yeah. they should be completely separate things but mm-hmm. that's the, the reality we see it's not you know like that the the, the character almost become part of the person mm-hmm. yeah are you talking person. about pablo oh i'm just talking yeah. like in general like this okay. presents like a problem with 
our i mean not a problem it's just nuances that we have to yeah. Yeah. navigate it's, it's it's this whole thing like the gina Carbano thing right, right. kind yeah. of what you're exactly. getting at where like yeah. the the no. coding of the character is kind of tainted because of the baggage that the which is actor is because, because carrying. her character you will actually see as like wait this is the most open-minded like this person is willing to you know they were having a, their own downtime and they're willing to train a whole village to defend themselves without it like you're talking about a character that's just like so open-minded and then all of a sudden it's like oh well you know who portrays the character doesn't mm-hmm. embody that ideals those are the, the or, or, or like, of the author can we really practice it right <laughs> or, or or the jk rowling thing like we talked a little bit like that was bad that was, uh... but 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 so so how can you does the story and the myth that's behind the story is it influenced by that actor or the mm-hmm. author? Mm-hmm. Yep, it's it's a great it's a good debate. That's the I mean that's been my struggle because I like my personal struggle because I've never I'm not someone who knows a lot about actors. I don't mm-hmm. I'm not into that that side of it, mm-hmm. especially when it comes to Star Wars because Star Wars is so close to, and near and dear to me yeah. that for me the way I look at them, the way I think about them, the way I speak about star wars it's very real and there's part of me who like as an artist person like there's a reality to the creative world that like we're just tapping into something else you know what i mean and there is a reality to baby yoda i mean there is very real emotion in those things and so when all this you know it started with rosario dawson first who Mm -hmm. you know but i'm sure she's gonna play ahsoka and ahsoka is yeah maybe this will be the transition but like, yeah, she's my, she is my <laughs> she is my very 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 favorite character my She's your favorite spirit animal stars. she like i trust never in a million years had i been as emotionally moved as when a, a certain episode from ahsoka and it literally changed my life and made me a better person made me the father i am today i've talked about it before but i, I mm-hmm. can share it but like I've never seen these characters as the actors. And then Gina Carano came, or uh, it was Rosario Dawson for me first. I was like, oh, why? This is going to be really tough. Like, this is going to be tough. In that case, I was like, well, it's a lawsuit. Mm -hmm. I mean, sadly, you know, as a queer person, I know how it goes. And so I can can probably finish the story. I'm going to really try to not finish that story until the story is finished, but let's be real. And then Gina Carano stuff started happening, right? And I, we loved Cara Dune mm-hmm. as a collective fan base. I felt like everyone loved her. Yep. Everyone loved Gina Carano. She was, seemed so cute. She was so appreciative. We were yeah. like, we were all rooting for her, which is why I think it made it worse because I yeah. think she had all of fandom rooting for her. Yeah. We were all like, thank God she was given this opportunity. She's finally getting to be this voice and she isn't just a prop in the background who's muscular and like good for you and she seemed so grateful and she and we were and then it all came out Mm -hmm. I'm like you know and again I think I I believe people are are more forgiving than what a lot of people are given credit for and we could have been like hey maybe you'd understand what you're doing is really insensitive it was brought up Now, some people go on the attack right away, and I don't think that's cool either. Like, that's Mm -hmm. not fair. That you're not going to win in that road. Like, but most people did not behave that way. And then she Mm -hmm. just doubled down on everything. And then it was just like, this is unforgivable now. Like now, like now you've had time and to to realize what you did and take lesson from your character. Yeah. Take lesson from the script you're reading. Exactly. She would not do that. We saw her grow in the show we saw her learning to change when we first met Cara Dune she is just like I am after the empire that is it I am driven by this hatred Mm -hmm. of them then she meets baby Yoda yeah and is like oh my god we need to fight for something she's still anti-empire obviously but like she's like I need to fight for something more bigger yeah I met these people in this village I need to fight for something more and then she goes into and it's just I'm like oh just take lessons which is the part that's really hard because I really love Cara Dune like I love that character yeah Yeah. I know which is why I sympathize with Rosario Dawson in a way because it's uh, from my perspective right Mm -hmm. it's like as we all code 
the things that mean for us. Yep. For me, the Rosario Dawson thing is like, you know, the Latina, right? Mm -hmm. It's kind of like Hispanic and she's an advocate for a lot of Puerto Rican causes. And what I've actually so, really yeah. liked her. So, so it, it's kind of like, yeah. it's, can we, can, it's like, oh man, it's someone you're rooting for. Yep. Like you said, and it's but, kind but, of but like, how can, we, how can we detach from it? Or can, or can we? Yeah. Yeah. Or should we, right? Yeah. But, but, but that brings, it's interesting because you should, I mean, I mean, at least from my experience, Latino culture tends to be more close-minded when it comes to things about gender, about oh, yeah. uh, sexual identity, sexual expressions. Like, yes. So like, it's almost like when I heard, I was Catholic like, church. Uh. Yeah. When I heard, I was like, <laughs> well, in a way, like, I, 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 like it's it's sad, but I was like, I can see it happening. Like, it's unfortunate. Like, mm. this is, and, and, and it's mm. it kind of like Brian said. Like, you can sort of see where it probably will end. Like, who's gonna win? Who's gonna lose? Like, just because it's very clear like oh you got yep. one that's okay that's established that's versus somebody that subverts what's mm. no quote unquote normal which is which is bullshit and i mean i, I don't want to i hate like but it's bullshit in every sense like yep. normal is just just you yep this goes to all our listeners normal is you <laughs> don't doesn't matter what you think how you, like mm. everybody's normal be you yeah. Celebrate yes. our differences. Stop looking yeah. for our similarities and start celebrating our differences. That's how yes. I feel. Yeah. yeah. Again, I recognize <laughs> that I see myself everywhere, <laughs> at least on one side. So I get it. Mm -hmm. But at the same time, I don't see myself anywhere either. Like you know, it's yeah. this double-edged sword. But um, yeah, that's me. So, so, that's my so, so that's what? my philosophy on life: is celebrate our differences. Like, go look for what's actively different and learn something from it because it's actually a whole lot more interesting to speak yeah. with people yeah. who you have nothing in common with. And the thing that builds you together is learning from one another. Then all of a sudden, you start having things in common. It's a really beautiful way to like yeah. get yeah. to know people. For yeah. me, for me, and, and that's the found family. That's what Star yeah. Wars is all about. Mm -hmm. Like, mm -hmm. you find people that you are different, and then all of a sudden, it's like, wait. We can be friends. We can be a family. Like, let's yeah. enjoy. But, but I, I guess, like, roping back in, like, Brian, why, why Ahsoka? Yeah. What's... So, I mean, I've loved to, so, like, Luke Skywalker is my childhood hero, just mm -hmm. like everybody's. Um, <laughs> I, after having a podcast, I'm realizing the importance of sharing things and you know thank you to our our listeners at pink milk and thank you for the personal notes that mm. i have received from people about how we've helped them see things differently you know i got i've gotten a few messages from parents who are like thank you i have a daughter who's a lesbian and hearing your story has helped me understand what her life is like and it was wow. like i mean how beautiful is that that's like right. it's amazing it's yeah. A, yeah it's a yeah. privilege and Agreed. i'm honored yeah uh -huh. it's like yeah. I mean, the first time I was a wreck, I was like, oh, but. <laughs> but, it's like, like, but, but, but it, it, it's a turn point. Like, how crazy is it that by being you, yep. you are being a rebel? Like, you are just yep. actually yep. helping yep. somebody else by the act of just, I'm going to embrace, radically embrace who I am. Yep. Mm -hmm. Like, that's, that's, so yeah. That's something that I've learned this last year, actually. In looking the way I do, there is a power coming from that because I can pass <laughs> mm -hmm. and then drop a bomb in there and be like, like and be a voice for something different. Like yeah, and I, then change people's minds. Yeah, like mm -hmm. that's you know, not everyone has that opportunity, you know, yeah. because they're judged long like two blocks back as they're seen walking up. And that's mm -hmm. it's wrong on every level. So yes. use the tools that we have to help mm -hmm. better other people. And that's something that I, I feel like. I feel like as a family now, like I've, I can talk to parents now, like on a kid level and like bring something new, you know, we live out in the suburbs now, like I never thought I'd live in the suburbs, but I do. And now there's, you know, we've talked about all these things. Anyways, back to Ahsoka, sorry. Uh, <laughs> oh, but it's all, it's all, it's yeah. all, it's all, it's all part sorry, of the conversation. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so I've loved Ahsoka, like from the minute she came down that ramp in the Clone Wars, thank God I was not part of the internet or Twitter, if it even existed back then, because like I didn't, yeah, I vicious. didn't get any of it. And I didn't even know it existed until probably, I didn't know it existed until the world already loved her. And then I was like, oh yeah, all the, are you kidding me? This is, but I loved that character, right? And it was the end of chapter five. 
and uh spoiler oh, oh we haven't gotten there yet do you know the whole story and you know you have you know spoiler, it's fine story. i know the story i've read okay. her book i okay. yeah okay. i just haven't seen everything oh. but yeah go ahead okay. i love ahsoka too <laughs> so i've shared the story before um several times but it you know and i love telling it because it's everything <laughs> but the end of that chapter you know she uh, the end of chapter five or season five is she's been wrongly accused of yeah of murder basically and her the jedi her family yeah left her her. dropped her Mm -hmm. and like it was nothing yep and i know there's so many people who relate to that for me i related to it as a queer person and i'm fortunate that most of my family has stood by me Mm -hmm. i've lost plenty of friends i've lost extended family just you know i've lost potential friendships whatever it is as Mm -hmm. a queer person you lose a lot of people and from my experience, I never want to offend anybody, but from my experience, so much of that drop comes from religion and mm-hmm. what they True. are told to think. Mm-hmm. And mm-hmm. here's Ahsoka, their religion said, I've got to drop you. And really no one had her. And then there's Anakin who like is trying and he's torn because he's connected there, but he's also connected mm-hmm. to her. And it's mm-hmm. it was another moment where Anakin should have chosen- yeah, he should have chosen his attachment. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And that, you know, there's so many lessons, right? Like I and and the episode, you know, we learned that it wasn't her, it was that darn Barris and Barris. Yeah. Mm-hmm. <laughs> but like and then the Jedi comes back like, okay, oops, sorry, yeah. oopsies. Come on back. And they are they are so arrogant and so yeah. full of themselves that they just assume she's going to come back, right? Yeah. Anakin's super happy. He's broken though, too. I mean, in that moment, he is broken. You can see it all over his face. You hear it in the performance. And then Ahsoka just closes their hand and said no. And walks away. And she's like, I have to go do this on my own. And mm-hmm. as a queer person, you we, you were just sharing this earlier. All of a sudden, your entire world is redefined in a moment. And it made me think when I was 16 years old, at my junior prom when I realized I actually went to prom with a guy like we turned it into this whole joke thing but I was like oh my god I actually and that was the moment (laughs) that I knew (laughs) we were sitting in the zoo and I was like oh my god like I'm gay like it's always there in the back of your brain you you always know it's always there yeah but you don't know what it is I talk about you know that's one of the things I've always related to the aliens I look like everybody Mm -hmm. else but on the inside, I felt different. And when you're little, you just think you look different. And that's the only mm. way our brains can like, I yeah. just look different. I don't look like. Yeah. And that's so interesting. That's like, so true. Like, yeah, it's 100%. And I connected to Ahsoka on that. I was just this like awkward person who I'm a, like a happy, fun person. And then, but I'm also very serious. And I, there's like a layer underneath those things. And being a short guy, I was super skinny forever. And you're not treated the same way. You're not treated as a man because of that. And Ahsoka was never treated as anything because she was this little girl. And I just yeah. like connected to, to that so much, right? Of like, there's more to me than mm-hmm. what's right here. And then she leaves. And it's not the act that she left that changed me. But she closed the hand and she walked. And I'm sorry if I... No, please go I for love it. it so much. Like, <laughs> I know. But she walks uh, away. Like, yes. <laughs> she walks away without any anger. And she just accepted it. And like the music, is, there's no music and she just mm-hmm. walks. And as a queer person, I the minute you come out to yourself is one layer, then you got to process those things, right? And then you start telling other people and all of a sudden you have to walk alone. Yeah. And you know, the world hates you. You know, for me back then, especially the world hated me. I grew up in the eighties again. I knew something was different. It was the height of the AIDS crisis. And mm-hmm. all I saw on TV were the protests and the marches. And I identified, I said, that's me. I remember my mom saying, that's me, that's me. And she's like, no, 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 you know, and not in a bad, but you know, that's yeah. not you, this is what it is. And I'm like, no, it's me. And so I was always drawn to it. And when I was coming out at 16, Pedro from the real world, which was this big deal back then, I remember died that. at 30. Mm-hmm. And I know how important that was, but for me at 16, I also had to grapple with the idea that half my life was over already. I was going to die of AIDS. That was, that's, you're gay, you're going to have AIDS and no one's going to respect you. They're going to vilify you for it. Mm -hmm. 
and you're just gonna be alone. And then you come out and then you're alone. And I moved to Texas. Why well, I moved to Texas to come out? I don't know, but that's where I moved. And I didn't want to have to come out. So I just moved to a whole another place. And I was just <laughs> big gay <laughs> Brian <laughs> from the onset. And so I didn't have to deal with that. And, you know, there's a lot of people there that thought I was wrong. And, but it was easier for me that way. Cause I'm like, I didn't mm-hmm. even know you before. So if you don't, whatever, that's good. Yeah. 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 But and it, I had, you know, you have to identify, you have to define who you are. And then you put on the things again, what I was saying earlier of Ahsoka being not treated the same. Well, mm. now I'm, at that time, I weighed like 110 pounds. I was 5'4", this tiny little thing. And then all of a sudden, you're not treated like a man anymore. And I'm like, mm. which is fine. But, you know, like, I'm like, I, there's a lot. And you just have to, you have to build yourself up all over again because there is no roadmap for who we are there's plenty of there's stereotypes within the community that i understand why they're there also like i understand why it's all there especially back then because we were just doing anything we could Mm. do to like find our way Mm. but you get angry like you start to get angry about all these things because it's really tough and it is not the right thing and here i was that episode came out i don't i think it was 30 it was somewhere right in there Mm. And I watched her walk away. I was like, oh my God, I don't have to carry this anymore. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I, can, I can be thankful for where I came from. I can be thankful for those people who got me to where I am now because I really love who I am. I'm very proud of who I am. I strive to be the best that I can possibly be. And they still had a part in that. And I don't have to agree with what they did now, but I will honor that something they did helped get me here. And I can... I can let this all go. Mm-hmm. And then fast forward years later, as a parent, I was like, I am such a better father now because I don't have this. Mm-hmm. I can teach my children to not have the hatred of their parents for the things, because nothing good brought my kids here. You know, they, there was a lot of mistakes being made on their bio families, but they don't have to hate them either. And they yeah. can go on as a full person be thankful for us. We are their fathers. There is no changing that. But that doesn't make me any less than because they are also parents over here. And yeah. how freeing will it be for them to have someone, you know, hopefully that I can teach them, like, don't be angry. Like, you do not yeah. have to be angry. You can honor that anger in the moment because we all need to, and then let it go. Mm-hmm. Let it go and just see them as people and try to sympathize with something because they're still your parents. And Ahsoka represents that to me so much and she literally made me a better person and I just I love that character Mm. because without her I don't think I'd be the father I am today like I mean that with every fiber of my being (laughs) like I just love her that's so beautiful yeah that is and that's the power of Star Wars that's the power of the myth that's the power of not giving you too much which we're just talking about is also (laughs) complicated yeah 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 Yeah. Yeah. but if they gave me too much about who she was what I a 30 year old man's time be able to be able to identify with a 15 year old girl probably not Mm -hmm. probably not but because she's not just but i also but then you feel bad because then there's also the power that she's a 15 year old girl and i hope that that brings you know (laughs) that's the problem with men you know but i just i love that character like i love her with everything that i am and i just think she is star wars she is the everything she's just everything she's perfect and it makes me very afraid (laughs) It, in a way, she ends up being what the chosen one should have been. She became mm-hmm. the chosen one, and she and found that's also, balance within herself. And yeah. that's yeah. also mm-hmm. that's also mm-hmm. important. Yeah. You don't yeah. you yeah. don't need to be a chosen one. Once mm-hmm. you find your own balance, you are mm-hmm. your own chosen one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and it yeah. goes back to that yeah. story. Yeah. Like, exactly. you, mm-hmm. like Ahsoka was her own. I am my own savior. Mm-hmm. Like, but if if I can walk this path mm-hmm. and help others along the way then better and and, and uh, I'm, I'm just like goosebumps all over the place so yeah. <laughs> i want to th- thank you thank you for sharing that honestly oh yeah you're welcome yeah. Awesome. Yeah, yes. she's amazing. everything i mean she's everything and, she is and, and, she and there's... owns she owns who she yeah. is yeah. and i don't need your approval mm-hmm. but i don't need your approval like push it away if you want to yeah. give it to me i'm here i'm here to receive yes. it but I'm not seeking it. I'm like, yeah. what a powerful, powerful way to live your life. Like mm-hmm. just you're, you're open armed and you're, sh- you're like, you're exposing 
that's what she is so she exposes everything she exposes mm -hmm. herself to everything and it's not this hard shell on the outside it is her exposure and it's like she is hard on the inside you know but but less things in still. And it's just the lesson, it's such an important lesson. And as a queer person, it's so easy to just, and like, because it's it's hard, it's getting a lot easier. I mean, this last year has been really hard all over again and it feels mm -hmm. like it did back yeah, in the nineties, but back. <laughs> yeah, there was a little rewind yeah. there from all the yep. hatred, but mm -hmm. I think, I think we're finding the light again, hopefully with, you know. I hope so. I can't wait. But I wanted, to ask you, changes. I wanted to uh, ask you though about like uh, your perspective on Ahsoka. And I, uh, you know, I'm, I'm very into symbolism, right? And like how visually we can convey, right? Some of the storytelling points that we're trying to talk about narratively. Mm -hmm. And one issue I had with not Ahsoka, but something that they did with Ahsoka in season seven and it rubbed me, it rubbed me the wrong way. And I wanted mm -hmm. to kind of get your uh, thoughts on that. And I think it's technical. But for me, one thing that I always liked about Ahsoka, obviously, is her independence. And visually, it's like how unique she is, not mm -hmm. only her race, but also her, her stances and how she fights. Yeah. Exactly. And especially her stances going... were always very using her entire body yes. and, you know. Exactly. Yeah. And then going into Rebels and seeing, spoiler alert, uh, I mean, uh, <laughs> how she purified like corrupted crystals of red yeah. and turned them into pure white. Yeah. So when I, we, rewind it and went back to see you know finish clone wars and go into season seven something that always sat wrong with me was the lightsaber color change yep. to blue uh oh. i don't know inherently like i i it just felt wrong yep. i mean the the you know the on the on the surface level what bothered me is just like i like green lightsabers but yep. like you know, and deeper, the green and the yellow yeah. was just but then but then deeper yeah. deeper than that i was mm -hmm. like there's something that's just wrong about it and like hearing you talk about ahsoka's identity and like how that spoke to you not only like through her journey but yours i circle back then to like that scene of anakin giving her her lightsabers but with blue blades just still doesn't sit right with me and i just wanted to see if you had like any opinions on that because i oh. think that's a very strong <laughs> you know, visual symbol. And I, oh. I, and I've heard, I think it was uh, Filoni actually talk about why they did it, but like the answer is still BS in my <laughs> mind. So I just wanted to see if you had something there. I mean, it's right there in the text. Mm -hmm. This weapon is your life. Like a lightsaber is mm -hmm. everything to a Jedi, right? Mm -hmm. I mean, it's their final thing. I think that says, I think it speaks to her and how amazing she is again. Because she, I think that says more to Anakin. Mm -hmm. That was Anakin's way of apologizing. And because he's Anakin, he's arrogant. And so, of course, it's going to be blue. I mean, he's like, and I gave them a little upgrade or whatever the, yeah. the line yeah. is. Mm -hmm. But Ahsoka is so sure, she's so confident in herself that mm -hmm. she knows by taking them will help Anakin. Mm -hmm. And so she's yet again willing to sacrifice what she needs mm -hmm. to help someone well, else because she knows that Anakin needed the forgiveness mm -hmm. and she was there to forgive him. And it was, she's always, it's, she says it the episode before when you, you know, you do the right thing for people because that's just what you do. Mm -hmm. And she's like, she didn't do it for the Jedi. She said it right there. And when that line, that stupid Mace window, citizen oh like, yeah oh he, well he got his so. yeah good for you because i know what's about to happen tomorrow <laughs> dude ha, ha. <laughs> but like i always read it as that i i think it actually spoke volumes to ahsoka as a character of saying you know what that was her way of saying i forgive you i forgive you there is no other anakin can't use those words the dude is like incapable of using words like that like <laughs> but that was his way to do it and then in a very anakin way if i gave you a little upgrade um yeah. That was to me. That's how I read that scene, and I, I, I like it for that because I feel like it was. And then to know that was Anakin's last gift. Mm. He didn't even like. He didn't even give like he didn't have time to give his wife anything. You know, they, I guess they could, but you know, like that was his final. That was like Anakin's mm -hmm. final gesture to his sister, to his daughter, to you know, that was his yeah. final gesture. And imagine how hard it would be 
for her <laughs> in that moment when she feels it all and she's got his lightsabers. I'm like, oh God, it's like, I love, I'm, I love Clone Wars. There's so much, mm-hmm. there's so much underneath everything. Yeah. Um, and that was right after the Martez sisters arc, which is mm-hmm. probably Night Sisters is going to be really hard to top, but I really, really love the Martez sister arc. I think did it go on maybe one episode too long probably but i love what the martez sisters represent i love yes. we would not have ahsoka in rebels if it was not for the martez sisters mm-hmm. um they taught her a lot and showed her the world and that latinas so yeah that, exactly that kind of <laughs> helps out <laughs> and yeah. not only like they're not they're not only coded visually as latinas but they you know they're yep. they got that attitude that kind of when i saw it now that i'm you know we're cognizant of it. I'm like, okay, <laughs> finally i mean there we go uh, it's about it's about time yeah. you know, we got some some you know active strong latina female you know characters represented in this show yeah because otherwise before that who did we have uh jimmy smith as bail organa and then yeah. diego luna as casting andor but in terms of like female representation in star wars mm-hmm. not that much yeah we had leia and padme forever that was it yeah. Which I mean, awesome, but yeah, yeah they're great. They're great, but. But you kind of want more. Yep. I mean, these days, like now I'm really finding myself connecting with Din. Like I feel like yeah. this next chapter of my life as a father, I'm connecting mm-hmm. with him and, and I finding myself very emotionally attached to that character too. So I don't even know how I'm going to feel like Whoa. seeing him and Ahsoka together. <laughs> together. I was very, yeah, I was very excited last episode when the mere mention of her name, I was a puddle on the floor. Oh, like, I love this yeah. character. And I am like... I didn't expect that. I was like, I didn't know they were going to name yeah. drop. Like, well, whoop, that's yeah. well, when yeah. Bogotan oh. first said it's like, I'll take you to one of their kind. I was like, ooh. That's so I, uh, yeah, I was like... Mm-hmm. And I was like, I think that's all they're going to say. I think it, that's yes. all the little hint we're getting. Yeah. And then it's like, that you will find Ahsoka Tano. And me and my husband were like screaming at the TV like, oh my God, no. But isn't that a good sign from what we just talked about? Like we I know. heard the name and I yeah. instantly, I forgot about her. Yeah. And it, yeah. luckily, unlike Gina... She's going to be in full makeup and full prosthetics, so it's going to be much <laughs> yeah, easier true. to hide who she is. Like yeah. there will be a a separation. But it's it's interesting, but, uh, and not not to you know uh, necessarily talk about the act actor portraying the yeah. character. But for me, it's it was always interesting the the rumored casting of Ahsoka, right? Because Rosario Dawson, and then see what they did with Bo Katan. And they, ca- you know, casted uh, Katie Sackhoff to reprise the role, yeah, yeah. which I thought, one, genius, great. But then I kind of feel like, well, if you did that with, with Bo-Katan, why couldn't you do that with Ahsoka? I mean, I've In seen my, Ashley. Yeah. I've seen Ashley cosplay. She rocks it. So I felt like they shipped uh, Ashley Eckstein a little bit there. Yeah, which is, which is interesting because it goes back to that previous conversation. Ashley, mm-hmm. at least from our scene, embodies... Yeah, yes. Ahsoka as Actively. part of yes. her yes. personal career, like she mm-hmm. has books about it. Uh, it's it's part of her brand. Like yeah. she accepts like this this character that I play is very important to Brian and a thousand other people. Mm-hmm. Like mm-hmm. so, like she she's aware of that, which is interesting. Like how come somebody that the fan I, I I never heard anybody in the fan saying like oh they hate Ashley Eckstein yeah mm-hmm. zero people <laughs> zero. I've never had that like so I, I mean has interested. there been information on that though did they actually offer her the role I mean I'm sure that they shafted her and wow. absolutely sure. okay in That's... my mind I hope mm-hmm. they offered it to her and it didn't work for whatever reason for whatever she, reason mm-hmm. yeah she had made a post on Instagram like a year and a half yeah. ago okay mm-hmm. and because she's her it was cryptic. And, like yeah. Yeah, yeah, but she, I feel like she has taken the responsibility of the Ahsoka mantle very mm-hmm. to heart. And yeah. I think to what you were just saying, but like she allowed the character to change her as a person. And yes. I really feel that she made her a better person. She took the script and was like, oh, this is, you know, this is, and she this could is. have walked the path of being really ticked off too because of how yeah. she was treated yes. for so yes. long, but she mm-hmm. didn't, you know, I'm yeah. sure she had her moments, but. Anyways, what about y'all? I'm very curious. Characters. <laughs> now that I've right, talked curious. for like an hour. 
I, I want to hear running. Goose. Goose, what are, what are your characters? I don't know. It's. I mean, it's interesting because, like, I was actually thinking about it before. Uh, you know, we started recording today. Like, characters that, like mean something in a in a way that kind of either change who I who I am or inspired me in some way. And it was it was very complicated for me because then I realized that like my consumption of this media is kind of mechanical in a way, uh, much much less so emotional. So like I relate to characters in a, in a in a detached way. I've noticed after you know hearing everyone talk. So for example, like Ahsoka and Luke were are kind of my favorite characters, but they're more you know I like them in a in a in a detached way because yeah. of what they are in terms of storytelling. So it, it, it's very weird. And it's kind of touching to like what I said when we started recording. It's like I, I kind of look at things from the symbolic and mythical perspective. So it's, it's, it's really, it kind of makes me, it makes me sad <laughs> listening to like everyone have like those journeys <laughs> with these characters. And like, I, I haven't gone through that uh, with any, like any particular character in any direct way. Even though like Star Wars does mean a lot to me, it has always been like a uh, an anchor in my life. You know, in a way, like I've been you know in some dark times, and like Star Wars has always been there to uplift me because it's such a positive uh, franchise that it collectively means a lot to me. But in terms of like a character, like I never had like that one character that I'm like that's me. Mm -hmm. I haven't had that. Maybe I maybe maybe I will, but like for maybe me, will. maybe I will. Yeah. But for me, always like my my main character, always growing up was Luke Skywalker. I always felt that Han Solo was kind of overrated. Sorry, uh, <laughs> I mean I like and, act, and actually Butless has been dropped. <laughs> it was no, I mean it's not that I didn't like Han Solo. For me, yeah, it was a felt, thumbs down button. Yeah, the thumbs happen. down Sorry. click. <laughs> Sorry, Harrison Ford stands. Uh, but like for me, it was always, and I think I relate to you on this, Brian. Like I've always was like the skinny you know, the scrawny, short, shorter guy growing up that like always felt kind of discriminated as a guy or man or whatever because of my look. So like I always liked Luke because of that, because he mm -hmm. was kind of a discriminated, scrawny kid. And I always felt that Han Solo was the cool kid. But like in school, always got yeah. the, even though he wasn't impressive. It was like, yeah, yep. you're, just, you're a fucking criminal. What the fuck? Uh, you're, you're a criminal and you just happen to look good and do the right thing at the last minute. And they, Yeah, and there was still something, you. I think there was something very kind of superficial about his character in the original movies as well. Yeah. Uh, he grew a lot in, you know, the sequel trilogies, I think, as yes. a character. They they made him, you know, a father, an adopted mm -hmm. father to, to Rey. So there was a lot of death more to Han Solo in the yes, sequel trilogy. Yes, yes. So he grew up a lot as a character. And then, you know, Hit when Pilo kills him, it still makes me cry like a little baby yeah. because oh, yeah. you see Another so one. much growth. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Just still to this day, I mean, it's just horrible. Every single time I watch it, I'm like, I'm not going to cry this time. And mm -hmm. then I always do. Uh, but yeah, I think in the original trilogy, there was something, you know, a little bit superficial about his character. And as you say, he's like seen more as the cool kid. And most yeah. guys that, or most of us that really do love Star Wars, identified more with like the nerd, the like, a little yeah, bit on the edges kind of character and all of that and you know Han it's like no cool no kid. We're no, never no offense be. to Han no <laughs> offense to Han but all he yeah. does is chase the girl and then yeah. he and everyone likes him for it and Luke is going you know he's going to train he's like oh man I gotta do the right thing I'm like I'm really struggling and then like people are like oh Luke is so whiny it's like what it's like the, the man is going out of his way to try to save the galaxy yeah. and he gets shit for it so that, I think that, they forget way, also how long, how Luke. young. I think they forget also how young Luke was when this all started. I mean, he is oh, allowed to be whiny. He's going through some stuff. I uh, know. Uh, his family got murdered. Yes. He didn't know anything about his father really until he talked to Obi Wan, and then he's thrust into this adventure. Like he gets to be whiny. <laughs> His adoptive family did not allow him to have questions about his father. It was yes. like that. Mm -hmm. I will shut you down. Yep. And how that has to be to not know mm -hmm. where you came from. Yeah. Like, mm -hmm. because... And then have one old man on the fringes tell you your story. <laughs> it's just like, wait, what? I've been from, lied to my from, entire from life. From a certain and... point of view. <laughs> although, <laughs> although I will, I will accept one criticism of Luke. And it's like he's not the sharpest, you know, not the brightest crayon in the box in New Hope. And it's like Ben Kenobi. I wonder. If, I mean, Obi Wan Kenobi. I wonder if they mean. <laughs> it's like yes, bro. Yes, yes. 
they mean that. Uh, so so you, you should have listened more in school. I will get that. He was not you, you smart. He was not. He grew up in some small some town. Some moisture farmer. We don't know. Yeah. We don't know, we don't know how, how much education he got. Homeschooled, maybe. I don't know. Uh, but, but in Tatooine. Again. From Owen Lars. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> So that's so that's 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 mine. That's, that's, well, that's and there is a lot of growth in Luke's character as well. I mean, mm -hmm. there's a lot of things that I dislike about the sequel trilogy, but their treatment of Luke especially is one of my favorite things. Yeah. I mean, he became a foster parent, like the next Jedi Master, trying to create, you know, the new Jedi Temple. Takes mm -hmm. in his mm -hmm. nephew to, you know, adopt him because his parents were afraid he was going to go dark side, and he takes him in and. Yeah. And he becomes a father to Kylo as well, because I don't think Kylo would have reacted as strongly as he did yeah. when Luke tried to kill him if he didn't see Luke as a surrogate father. Yeah. So there's this growth to him. And then... Well, Kylo, so, I mean, Ben, is always looking for... I know. Someone to yeah. look up to and yeah. have and their then, acceptance. Mm -hmm. And then eventually goes to Darth Vader without knowing that Darth Vader ended mm -hmm. up being a good guy at the end, you know, because that was never shared. Well, he does that He large. just thinks that... Uh, but actually, eh, mm. he does know. He just thinks that the light side version of Vader, he thinks Anakin is the corrupted version. Mm. He thinks that's what's not true. But he thinks Darth yeah. Vader is the actual correct yes. version of him. Yes, yes. I will say, as the one who needs to defend Return of the Jedi, that there was a lot of growth <laughs> in Han Solo in Return of the Jedi. As well, one yes. of the things they I, touched I upon understand. <laughs> in the Solo movie that I loved. You get Han, who sacrifices himself i mean there hope was probably lost in that moment anyways but he mm -hmm. sacrificed himself to try to help his friends that was not mm -hmm. something Han. well he would see but he would do it because he did it when, at the end of a new hope too mm -hmm. but he always had that 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 hyper masculine idea of what he had to be always mm -hmm. that arrogance surrounding him right and yes. he comes out of that carbonite and he is not the same person the first thing he does after that is he gets hugged by chewy and we get to see who they really are and he's like i'm all right pal i'm all right yeah. and he is softer and i know yeah. people in the fandom love to say how oh harrison ford didn't want to come back and he's just checked out blah, blah, blah. No, actually, no. we just met who han solo really was yeah. mm -hmm. that whole act that we saw for the other two movies was not him we saw him when he, we saw the real Han Solo when he comes back at the end of, sorry, <laughs> when we, he came back at the end of uh, A New Hope and then we see him when he yeah. sacrifices himself for his friends. When he gets salty, when he thinks Luke and Leia. Yep. Yeah, he gets really he jealous. Gets yeah. He gets salty. Yeah. Yeah. Like, oh my God, I'm sharing emotions. But in a, but but in a, but in a vulnerable way though, yeah. especially yes. like at the end when he's like, I'll walk away. I'm like, yeah. yeah. So I, I get that. I'm just being petty with him. Yeah, I <laughs> but I like I love and Solo is probably my favorite of the Disney era movies. Like I love Solo really? and I love really? that they went with that Han Solo because I feel like they were playing the guy from Return of the Jedi, not the other movies. Mm -hmm. And okay. that, had that had the time okay. that it needed, we would have seen that deconstruction of our hero actually okay. slowly crumbling down so that we would have seen him fall and then come back up again and it was yeah. just a lost opportunity but i love that they played that like i was, okay. I was so into it so if, if they do that then i'll, I'll, I'll solo two will be interesting <laughs> that's not yeah, good it's not i don't yeah. think we're getting it <laughs> which one's your favorite mo my favorites you know, um, it's my bets you're gonna hatch your bets i, I yes I, I've, my spirit animal has always been chewbacca I'm 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 on the other spectrum. Uh, I'm i I'm always been super tall, super hairy. Uh, and then I love this character. You know, Chewbacca's always just there, but to help, you know, their friends. He's always mm -hmm. like he's a rock. He, yeah, he yeah. he's the rock. He's like he doesn't question like he, he knows he's sure, like, okay, what we're doing is right. I'll help you out. I'll be there. Like I don't um I love that perspective of like you know he's he lives so long that it's just it's just like an, yes. another story to his life. And that's a really cool perspective. Mm -hmm. uh, from from Clone Wars, Asash Ventress was definitely that person that I just really blew my mind, just open and that's kind of like kind of Ahsoka's version of Brian's. Mm -hmm. my... Well, they're mirror characters, right? We were talking about yeah. originally. Yeah. Well, I will never look at this at Asajj the same way. Like, I will not have your story every time. And I, it's so, yeah. 
I'm so, so glad I got to hear that today. It's really <laughs> very beautiful. But from the arena theory, the character that I always loved was the Darth Vader. I I, I tend to really cool. like the evil characters. That's that's always been my thing. Like I saw mm -hmm. my first movie and the theaters was Lion King. I was crying at the end because Scar got killed. Scar. <laughs> I, I, like I came out of the movie crying and my parents were like, why are you crying? I'm like, because Scar just Scar died. died. Jeremy like, Irons Scar, like, for the win. Mm. I know, Jeremy Irons. Like to me, I always look for that redeeming quality. So when, mm -hmm. when Vader by actually, you know, just moves to helmet and be like, wow, this person who we thought was just like, this machine just like and then all of a sudden it's the most vulnerable one just like just don't put the mask back in just take mm -hmm. just, yeah. just watch me as i am at my most, yeah. most vulnerable point yeah it's just always, broken man just, that yeah. finally found his light and it's just yeah there's something really sad there's about that whole so, scene too yeah it, it, but it's sad but it's so i know heart it's warming it's yeah. heartwarming at the same time and it's redeeming you know yes. to finally you know bond with his son for the first time ever and, and see with his own eyes not through the mask for the first time since it was put on when his last vision of his wife was him killing her you know it's it's harsh i know it's you know uh funny because i think that's it's so that's like the heart of that moment is the heart mm -hmm. of probably the whole saga now like when you look at it all right mm -hmm. and we were recording a podcast with my husband tom who was a casual fan of best <laughs> and we were talking to someone about Darth Vader and the helmet being mm -hmm. taken off. And Tom's like, yeah, uh, I know I'm just a casual fan, but Tom, he never took his helmet off. <laughs> I'm like, who <laughs> <laughs> cares, bro? I'm like, that is like the most important scene in the entire original trilogy. <laughs> and it just went right over your head. He's like, oh, yeah, I guess I forgot. <laughs> like, oh, no. It was hilarious. It's like, yeah. uh, he's like, oh yeah, I guess yeah. he did. Oh. Like, yeah. Star Wars doesn't <laughs> touch people I like the same how way. About it. Oh, yeah. I guess he did. Yeah, uh, I guess he did. Yeah, I guess uh, it didn't happened. seem that important. It's fine. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, we can agree that you know some people are not touched by Star Wars in the same way that we are. Yeah. And that's Obviously. okay. That is totally okay. And that is completely this is totally okay. perfectly perfect. Yeah. Uh, uh, not that. That's last... unforgivable. <laughs> 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 It's his own husband. And he's like, it's unforgivable. Like, We're hey, trying that's to how, that's, I do not forgive. That's you how we. That. That's how we are with you, Nanny, in the Clone Wars. It's like everyone else is fine if they don't watch it. You is like, no. It's like you have to. You feel <laughs> I'm watching it. I know. You Finally, are. after how many fine. years have we known each other? Fine, after many years, but it's happening. Okay, it's, never it's happening. Late. It's never too never late. Too exactly. Late. Never too late. Exactly. You know, I, we were talking about it last time uh, how like I'm okay, how, like we we're a little jealous actually of Nanny because it's like I wish I could just watch it for the first time. And have that feeling of like, oh, like discovering it because it's such a it's awesome feeling because rewatching it it's amazing but like you know having that you know fresh the first person, reaction naive feeling yeah. of like watching it for the first time it's so so yeah so wonderful and it's like that's the problem with watching things when you're done you'll never get that feeling yeah. Yeah. that show works really really well as like a binge show yes oh, yeah. like you know you watch some of those arcs together bang 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 and it mm -hmm. just it sits differently for sure um yeah yeah what's your favorite character Nate? i'm curious uh leia well my favorite character <laughs> is princess leia you know um yes. sounds cliche obviously but oh no, it's not it's amazing it's not yeah i remember as because I watched them when I was a little girl. I mean, I was mm -hmm. born in 83, the year that, you know, Return came out. So I didn't see them in the theater or anything, but I watched them on VHS and grew up with them. And there was something about Princess Leia because she, when you first see her, you know, through the hologram and she's wearing this kind of mm -hmm. like, you know, white gown and it's like the princess on the, the goddess, tower, yeah. you know, mm -hmm. and, and asking for help, like, please help me. And then when you meet her, she's just the scrappy, just... Yeah. <laughs> I'm gonna save you guys. You guys came here to save me. You have no idea what you're doing. It's like, so it's what is just this half assed test. It's like, yeah, yes. it's like I only need your help because I can't do it by myself. It's yeah. not because I would I needed you to, to open the door and get me a blaster. <laughs> now I'm gonna help you guys. I yep, mean, there's yep. there's still something amazing from the first time that you meet her. And she's so she knows herself. She knows who she mm. is. She knows how she wants to act. She's completely demanding. I mean, she makes Han Solo, who thinks he's the greatest man alive, feel like crap from the first moment. She's just like, who are you? Like, I'm not playing with your thing. Like, whatever you're doing, I'm not down with that. And then 
she obviously the garbage should fly boy yeah she's you know yeah. and she's just amazing 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 and and then she's vulnerable as well i mean when mm-hmm. she you know right before uh han gets encased in carbonite she's the one that unabashedly i love you and he's you know i know and then obviously in return when they turn it around still stoic because she doesn't lose her shit like chewie does no yeah i can be i can be i can do this still be strong and i'm gonna save you so at the Mm -hmm. end you know they show uh at the end of empire her with luke you know like this is not the end we are going Mm -hmm. to save him this is gonna happen and and how she turns around obviously one of the most sexual scenes in star wars princess leia in the bikini Oh, which you I know, I thought you, you just, meant the the kiss in the Millennium Falcon. That's oh, oh, that is hot. I mean, yes, <laughs> definitely. I mean, stop what? Well, yes, I mean, because it has been it has been the best done love story of yeah. any of the love stories in any of my the... hands are dirty. My hands are dirty too. What are you afraid of? Like, oh, yeah. But no, because there's actual chemistry That's between so them close. from the beginning, and yeah. it's played off very I well. To like nice men. I, nice men. <laughs> I know, but she's awesome. <laughs> And then, <laughs> but then when you do see her, you know, in the golden bikini, which I think it's when a lot of men found puberty. Yeah. <laughs> and, and she owns it. I mean, she's just like, I'm not a victim here. I'm a badass here. I'm, I'm here for a reason. And then, you know, she's, you know, shooting literally, blasters. Literally killing Jabba with the chainsaw. I know. <laughs> it's, it's insane. And then she's running around and she's like, unabashed about the fact that she's in this tiny bikini like shooting blasters and cannons and you know flying around through the air and yep she's amazing and then that's her is really young and then you see her transition to general organa in the sequel trilogies and and she is amazing i wish i wish we could have had her for yes skywalker i mean she would have i think her character development, if she would have been alive for that last movie, would have oh, yeah. been epic, I think. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. But even with that, I mean, her as mother and that she sacrifices herself to save her son in her last act, the mm-hmm. fact that she was a surrogate mother to Ray as well, uh, her relationship with Han, her relationship with Luke, how she evolves. I think people make a lot of fun of, of that scene uh, when she gets shot out of the ship and then she comes back and says, oh, look at her as Mary oh, Poppins. I oh, and I God. was like, I love that. I started I crying when so they start it. to freeze her up. I was like, if they kill Leia, I'm done. I'm standing out of theater yeah. and I'm out right now. I'm done. I thought, I thought, I thought that was how she was going to go. I'm like, no, please, please don't. Don't edit her like this. And then yeah. you see her, you know, dragging herself back into the ship using the force and you're like, yeah. there it oh, is. Yeah. There is the Skywalker force in Leia who's already such a powerful, strong woman. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And it's it's so amazing. It's just yeah, I love Leia. I don't get how people I, 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 didn't like that scene because for yeah, me, like I it saw has it has been referred to. Like, yeah, people have referred it as look at her as Mary Poppins, and it blew my mind when it happened. And I'm like, yeah, Mary Poppins is a badass bitch. It was like, of course, yes, about? <laughs> true. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Right, but, but but that ties into like like how Leia has always been also like hope, like yeah. because I mm-hmm. want an empire when mm-hmm. Luke leaves and like Obi-Wan is like well yeah. he's our last hope yeah and Yoda's like there is, nope, another, there is another there's another one and and it's like to him it's just like yeah like the other one is probably as equal or better or than, better well, than yeah. what we got probably on the verging on the better well which is what we've gotten on the extended media right because and from a certain point of view uh, I haven't read it uh, but like I read mm-hmm. that there was one story in which Obi-Wan's ghost and Yoda are talking in Dagobah and about who to wait, no, not Obi-Wan's ghost. This is before Obi-Wan. Yeah, no, but, it's Yoda. But they're yeah. they're communing. They're communing. And Yoda's like, no, we have to train Leia. She's the better option. So like Yoda already acknowledged that Leia was, you know, probably stronger than Luke was. And then uh, it, it's funny reading out Brian, I don't know if you saw the whole thing that came out about the new the uh, George Lucas's treatments for mm-hmm. the sequel trilogy where Leia was supposed to be finally the chosen one because she's the one that brings the galaxy together under like her rule as chancellor and I was like yeah I mean that that's a great chancellor point of view <laughs> yes yes yep I mean I felt the opposite those... that they did to her 
after those that came out earlier <clears throat> earlier this week, I guess, right? Like, mm -hmm. I feel like we've gotten a lot of that just throughout in different ways. You know, they they've stretched out some of those stories. Uh, that was a lost, a real lost opportunity. With that, we couldn't have had that anyways because there was no politics in the sequel trilogy. Because yeah, whatever they try to kind of stay away from it. I, I yeah. don't know why. Really. Unfortunate. It's unfortunate. You but know, one of my favorite. Uh, oh, sorry. Go ahead. Oh, I was saying that as a little girl, I was also, um, you know, I was like a tomboy. I was like into sports and, you know, I hated when people gave me Barbies and dolls and, you know, you know, little cooking sets and stuff like that, which is it's the like presents that you get girls gender. in the Doing 80s. This. And I hated it so much. And there was something so awesome about Leia, you know, being a princess, but being a badass at the same time that I just loved about it. So, yep. there's a scene more because I love Return of the Jedi. It's perfect. Uh, like, I don't, it, it is so important to me, but I don't hear a lot of people talking about it enough. And like, you can, as a close to how she, how we meet her with, you know, into the garbage shoot flyboy moments, yes. like our introduction to her in, in a yeah. lot of ways. Yeah, we have the hologram, but you see her and that's what it is. Yeah. Mm -hmm. To in Return of the Jedi, which I love in Bloodline, how they refer to her as the Hut Slayer. And it's this like total power that was given Hutt to her. Slayer. Like, it's so wow. Mad. Yeah. Um, it's so good. So we see her in that, right? And mm -hmm. and she looks vulnerable next to this big thing, like half naked, and she's got a chain around her neck, and you think she's powerless in that moment, mm -hmm. but she's not powerless. She is cal she's she's the queen's gambit, like looking yeah. up at the ceiling, calculating out, every moment. Move. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. Like, yeah. And like, then it's my turn. Yeah, exactly. And yes, yes. Love wait. it. Uh -huh. So good. And then you get in that movie the 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 moment that's that really to me wins the war is she meets this little kid who's scared and she's soft and pulls out a little a little biscuit a little cracker for him to eat yeah. and it yeah. was that single act of kindness it yeah. seems like nothing yep made her no don't go that way go this way mm -hmm. and i'm about to take you to the thing that's going to allow us to win this entire war and it was like uh -huh. her she in that movie, she's per, you know she's the badass. But yeah. then when she needs to be the soft yeah. thing, she is not yeah. just one thing. Like it is so, I love yeah. that moment so much. And the way she plays it, it's just so tender. And and I feel like it was another like I when we first meet Leia, she doesn't know how to think just about herself. She's she's yeah. the ultimate diplomat. She's mm -hmm. the princess. She knows how to think. For the whole right she watches mm -hmm. her entire planet die mm -hmm. and i don't have time for this right now and it's instant i got to go into the next thing because i yeah. have the entire galaxy to worry about yeah well luke is moping about one old guy exactly. he met five yeah. minutes ago yep exactly <laughs> yeah. and then but then she she meets luke she meets han she meets chewy she meets the droids and all of a sudden she has this found family which there we go like so much yeah. of Star Wars is a found family yeah and okay i lost I lost my family and these were who were here for me and they didn't treat me as a princess her whole life you know now we get the books but you could have even assumed it back then yeah. everyone walked on eggshells because she's a princess and these mm -hmm. people didn't treat me that way they just saw me and she started to let herself personally connect to things and it goes back to the whole point of all of it it's Leia's mm -hmm. personal attachment to her friends yeah that led to all of those things and her personal attachment to people, which is the ultimate diplomat too, right? You know, she yeah. can connect people on a human to human level. Yeah. And, and it was just like, it was that softness and that attachment to her friends of I've got to figure out how to do this, that saved everything. And it was that one little act. It was that one little moment changed the course of everything. You know, I mean, imagine if she was like, get this little walking carpet out of my way in Return of the Jedi, you know, she learned yeah. and she could have yeah. very much said that in yeah. a new hope yeah. but she yeah. grew and it's like ah, oh, i love that part i love that scene like i love it it's just it's one of my favorite moments in all of star wars because i just yeah. think and you're how right much it's, it's not talked into, about enough it's not and, yeah. and and actually it's not talked about how enough that for all the other characters their story it's almost like given like this what you have to follow mm -hmm. leia yeah. had she could be a jedi she could be princess she could be a general she could be water and it was all of them yeah <laughs> yeah and, and, and that's the beauty of it she defined she didn't let anybody else define her yeah. because look look got defined by 
everybody else. Yeah. And that's why he went to exile. Like, yes. eventually, everybody gets defined by their outsiders. Mm-hmm. Leia is the only one that defines herself, which is something that Ray does down the road. Mm-hmm. Just the beauty of Ray as a character, you know. Oh, wait. Mm-hmm. I don't know. Like, most of us, we don't know what we want to do in lives. Like, that's just... Mm-hmm. How, how do you figure that out? And I think Leia did that flawlessly. Mm-hmm. Like, no. Luke doesn't sudden... make a lot of his own decisions. No. Yeah. He's led and fearful. Mm-hmm. And it's yep. been interesting as I've gotten older because, you know, Luke is, our, is everyone's hero. But then, like, you get older and you start to look how he is. And, like, mm-hmm. he's actually kind of weak. Like, I don't understand when people were outraged that he left. I mean, there, I think there was some execution yep. stuff that wasn't done super great to to me i'm like he is a child with trauma Mm -hmm. and thank god for the sequel trilogy for for finally kind of recognizing that they didn't Mm -hmm. you know they didn't explicitly say it there either but like Mm -hmm. that was such a natural move move for luke Mm -hmm. you know it's right there in the text again once you start down a dark path forever it will lead your destiny to lead your Mm -hmm. destiny right Mm -hmm. and there's no debate that the dude went to the dark side as he was dueling his father. Like, there's no question. It's right mm-hmm. there. He's got both sides. We see the mm-hmm. lighting, and we know he yeah. ended up choosing the dark in that moment. Yep. And it was right there. So, of course, it was going to be haunting him forever. Yeah. And there it was. He saw something could have happened, and his trauma triggered him, and he almost mm-hmm. killed this kid, and he shut yeah. it all off. Mm-hmm. Like, that was such a na- <laughs> like that is such yeah. a natural progression. It made yeah. so much sense to me. Yeah. Like why why was there the outrage? I mean, I still think, you know, I, I wish mean, he was I, in Rise of Skywalker more. I, oh yeah, absolutely. I I I, I uh, as we've talked on this channel many a time, I am a big, big Last Jedi fan. But I will I will obviously admit that when I saw Last Jedi for the first time in theaters, I did fall into the trap that fandom had laid out for me of wanting the badass Luke. Of being yeah. like, okay, video game level maxed out you know the stats we're gonna go we're gonna drop the gauntlet and it's gonna let loose and he's gonna destroy everybody mm-hmm. i i fell into that trap so that's why like when i saw last Jedi for the first time i was like a little disappointed yeah. but then though like the more i've like watched it and like seen his character development in that movie the more i love it because it just like humanizes mm-hmm. a mythic hero yeah. right and it kind of ties it back again like to to me and like my fears as a person and you know what i want to achieve in life and like fears of growing old and not being able to live up to you know what you want to be right when you keep progressing in life so like seeing luke as a mythic hero a legend in the galaxy and still be vulnerable and Mm -hmm. realizing that you know there's still things that he can learn and overcome was extremely powerful especially in the framing of his self deception with the fall of Kylo of uh, Ben Solo into mm-hmm. Kylo Ren with the three you know different scenes and then finally him acknowledging that he's been lying to himself over what happened yeah. because he's ashamed of himself because he yeah. in his mind he can't make mistakes because he's a legend the mm-hmm. legend of Luke Skywalker doesn't allow him to be a person and the minute he just let that guard down and be like no this is what happened he was able to be the legend and defeat not defeat the first order but stand them you know yeah. face them in the mm-hmm. ultimate jedi power mm-hmm. manifesto that he could have done and like we've talked about it previously but it's like the ultimate jedi way he did it through mm-hmm. non-confrontation mm-hmm. which yeah. is the ultimate way it's not uh, picking a lightsaber and cutting everyone down that's not the jedi way it was like through the peaceful means of like protecting himself mm-hmm. and then it was so poetic in terms of like how it ends because it's him looking out into the sunset the binary sunset again i know like, which, like the more i look at it like the more like i you know get emotional about it because like oh, it's so it's so poetic and i hate to keep harping on the same uh, trope that everyone takes as a joke but you know it's like poetry it rhymes yeah but for me it worked with luke so much more than like with ray for example with the binary sunset because the binary sunset for ray does at least for me personally mm-hmm. didn't really mean anything for her in her terms of her character growth but for Luke, it was so perfect because it's like this framing device that we set him up in A New Hope of him looking out for adventure and then ending with him, okay, I found my adventure, but most of all, I found peace with myself. 
Yep. So it's like closing his chapter in such a beautiful way that like, I don't know, Luke's character for me just keeps making a growing more in my mind, just meaning that much more. Yep. I don't know. I, I think Last Jedi is just a work of art. I don't know. <laughs> it's it's yeah. it's it's my it's the best of the sequel trilogy. I think. Yeah. Um, you know, I there's a you know whatever. No movie's perfect. Like, but I no. agree. I the the sunset for Ray. Like, I feel like that's where it's a movie also. And the sunset, the binary sunset doesn't have a lot of meaning to her, no. But it does to the audience. And like, yeah. I feel like that's that's where that sacrifice of art and character have to start to like mm -hmm. cross paths a little bit. Because like, if she went back to Jakku or something, like, we haven't had Jakku for 40 years, even, even, and I can understand the want for her to go back to Naboo, which was criminal, criminally like mm. underutilized and non-existent, yeah. which was yeah. awful. Cause that's the birth of a lot for a lot of people too. But it, even it's that, a planet. yeah, it is. but even that doesn't have a 43 year legacy like that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Like I can it's understand Tatooine. why they It's where I'll be gone. Yeah. Like yeah. I love Tatooine. I talk about it all the time. I feel like I'm like the only st Tatooine stand left in the world. But like I want to go. <laughs> I want to keep going back to Tatooine over and over. It's such. It is the place. Well, of now rebirth. I do because Cub yeah. Banth is there. So, yeah. oh. you know, we were <laughs> talking about representation, and I yeah. they, I I I have never like I'm not I'm. Tom and I started to joke like maybe we were just not romantic people or something like I thought we were but like we never saw Mando and Omera we never saw any of these things like I've never been a shipper before like I don't just not, <laughs> yeah, just not I don't thing, get shipping right? but whatever yeah. and then Cobb Banth showed up I'm like oh my god oh my god I, get <laughs> god. I, get I have my first ship <laughs> I am like, so like I am like they. I mean, I already thought the dude was queer coded, anyway. Uh -huh. like, how can and then, anyone deny that this is a gay dude? Like they are gay. Mm -hmm. There are fireworks blasting, and now I mean, I remember that night when we recorded. I was I was so excited. I'm like, oh my god, we're gonna have these two space daddies adopting interracial children throughout the universe, <laughs> and they're gonna raise them together, and it's gonna be beautiful. And I'm like, I see myself in Star Wars for the first time. I've never like, I didn't have to look. It's right there. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god it, it would be amazing if they did that it would be so i mean the the picture we chose for the episode was both of them standing one next to the other yep. in their I uniforms get, you know yeah. mm, that's so I, fantastic I, i'm like oh, a quick, quick one and that, that, now i want to see your opinion brian on yes ben poe because i thought that was going to be a thing yeah i honestly thought i thought was it was going to be a thing so yes i what i wanted yeah. personally <laughs> like i i wanted a really different kind of love triangle and then we got to see uh uh the last jedi and then we saw how rose felt about finn yeah and i was i really wanted to and the Raylos are going to come at me again but uh like <laughs> again, I, again. I'm like that. <laughs> and i love ben solo i'm there with you and i'm yeah. not trying to take away your Raylo shipping yeah. <laughs> for me uh -huh. like i wanted there's no way that poe dammer and bit his lip like that for nothing that was intentional right. there's no right. way right. Right. uh no right. way but what i wanted and then we have mm -hmm. finn who is a character who's just learning who he is and he's yeah. very much this like i don't know who i am the world is new like that's how yeah. the character was played yeah I he was completely their... indoctrinated his whole life and now he's trying to become independent and mm -hmm. yep and i was like what i want is for them to kiss and then i i wanted finn to be like you know what not for me i think there's <laughs> like there's we don't see like in in media at all like a super macho two dudes where one's gay and one straight being able to be friends like yeah. that doesn't exist we don't get a lot of quote-unquote masculine gay men in media mm -hmm. and i really wanted Finn and Ray to be together also okay. because how amazing would it have been to have had an interracial relationship but instead we put the two white people together because that's just what makes sense and yeah. and then we added a romantic idea for Poe which also fits into the cis narrative and yep same. or Pan that's in my that, mind yeah, is Pan that's, that's why <laughs> no that's why like right 
that's why rise of skywalker just kind of falls flat to me because it's yep. such a it goes out of its way so much to be like apologetic towards everyone jedi. that got offended yeah. by last jedi it's like oh uh, finn poe oh no look uh uh, uh poe likes likes a girl and it's like hey, and remember finn now he gets two girlfriends and now one is actually of his race see yeah. no That's no like, no nothing see, controversial we can't there. Yeah. We, we, we can't. Can. so can, yeah. it was like it was like ah. Like, that that was me like that's how i looked at it and we don't like how and again how great would it have been to have seen a character like fuel to experiment and that experimentation is like yeah. okay like they're ex- like you know i again being older as a queer person i remember mm-hmm. people like like if, if there was a dude who like tried experimented with a guy right mm-hmm. There was no way you were just you're in the closet and you're you're not when there was like this anger towards it instead of like really? at least in my in my circle that was my yeah, experience yeah. And mm-hmm. i'm like so gay people cannot can be married and do all these things and then come out later i mean which a lot do because of yeah. society mm-hmm. well, shouldn't it be the same on the other side mm-hmm. <laughs> like yeah like we're why are we negating that that's really great and what a great thing for a person to be even open about it especially 20 years ago when it was dangerous to say you were, (laughs) you know, uh, I would have liked, I would have really, I I think I wanted that more than I did a relationship. Okay. But I mean, and I think Finn would have been a great, you know, opportunity to do that and actually show experimentation. Cause as you said, not everybody is completely a hundred percent on who they are and, and experimentation should be applauded, not negated. So I think it would have been a perfect opportunity for him to have, you know, maybe something with Poe happening and then be like, yeah, maybe it wasn't necessarily for me. And then end up with either Ray or Rose as well. Cause Rose, yep. you know, that really be, loved that him as well. Or Rose. Mm-hmm. Or Rose. Poor she Rose. Great. She is like it was great. personification no, of what all of Star Wars like, is they short to be. Hand, shorthanded her. Yeah. yeah, they did. But like, uh, Brian was saying she's like the personification of Star Wars. Like she starts as this completely idealistic yeah. person, and when she sees that Finn is running away, she tries to stop him because it's like you're gonna betray us without really okay. understanding what he's trying to do. But she's just you know one of these people that's in the background of what's you know idealizing the rebellion. and then gets upset when she sees how it works. That's yeah. why I think the sequel trilogy up until Rise of Skywalker is yeah. very very meta. Like yeah. I see fandom and like real world things and like all the characters so oh. so much that I just have to stop myself and say, wait, is, was this actually intentional or am I reading too much into it? Because like I every character for me is such so clearly mm-hmm. a part of the fandom that like yeah. I just can't get over it. Yeah, that's one of the things I love about the sequel trilogy. I love that we're like it, how meta it is, and like we have all these characters living underneath the legend that came before them mm-hmm. as yeah. their history is starting to repeat itself. And are any of us capable of doing what our heroes did? And like, yeah. it's so good. Yeah. And also and seeing I, the flaws of what they did and being exactly able to yeah. learn from those things. Yeah. Like it, I like a lot of what the rise of Skywalker did. I really didn't like a lot of what it did. It was hard for me. I went through yeah. like right on the podcast, like seven stages of grief. Cause of course <laughs> I, came out of it. I loved it. It's star Wars. So everything's wonderful and yeah. great. Then the next episode, I was like, oh, I don't, I saw it again. I don't know. Then the third time, like, I don't think I like it. And I've never not liked a Star Wars before. Like, yeah, yeah. It, What's was very, it? <laughs> it was all on the podcast. And now I'm like, I want to like it. Now I'm like, you know yeah. what? It has been with us for a year. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I now it's had, just the, yeah. Yeah. Star Wars has been with me my whole life. I've yeah. had the prequels for half of my life. Yeah. And it's a part of it now. We need to either yeah. accept it or you exactly. know. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. So. And it gave yeah. me that ending. It gave me that end. And I yeah. like talk about found family. Like, you know, like it just spoke to so many things. I at that time, like I you know, I think about when Tom and I first got together, like the idea of being married just wasn't on the table. Right. It just was yeah. so, so far away that it wasn't even something we wanted, which is weird. Mm-hmm. But it was like, and then you know, having kids was something that was just never going to happen. It was not possible. And, and to see that thing, I remember when I took my husband's name, how much it meant to me. Like, I can't believe I actually get to do this. Like this, yeah. it is, this is such a privilege. And if people don't take their partner's last names, I don't, I, I, I get that too, but I'm like, this is everything to me. Like, I can't, 
believe I get to do this. Yeah. And I then, never thought I'd be able to do this. Exactly. Like I just yeah. appreciated it so much. And then to have my three adopted kids who have all had to change their name. And it, when our youngest came, it was really hard for him at the beginning. That was when Tom and I got married. And I was like, look, dude, like I can get married. I changed my name and look, nothing, nothing changes, nothing you changes. know, but this is what it looks like, you know? And I see, and, and, and I have seen my children. I have seen Ray. And one of the things that Ray does, like this movie handles two kids with trauma. So like, so incredibly beautifully well, yeah. honest, honest for the good and honest for the not so good parts of things. Uh, but you know, Ray never smiles the whole movie. She, the whole, the whole saga, she never yeah. really smiles until she says her name is Ray Skywalker. And I feel like I get that people wanted her to be a no one. Yeah. Mm -mm. I have yet to have a conversation with someone who was a no one. As a queer person, I felt like a no one almost my entire life. As children who were adopted, who went from home to home to home to home to home, who were broken by the time they were five, who, you know, well, I adopt a seven-year-old for the first time and you hear the things people are you sure you want to adopt a seven-year-old a lot of them have problems they're a little old I'm like are you fucking I'm sorry I don't are you no, kidding no. me like no, oh we we curse okay. it's fine yeah. Yeah. you're seven <laughs> how are you too how old? are you too broken at yeah, seven was, e yeah uh, and it, it's so offensive and I don't and people don't mean to be <laughs> I don't think all the time yeah. but like and to see my kids who they are when they first come to our house and as the process goes and seeing them in front of a judge and hearing that hearing that they are now a berry mm -hmm. and that realization that I don't have to leave again and the weight of the world oh coming and I saw that in Ray that day and like I'm watching mm -hmm. it in the theater and we had Eli who wasn't adopted yet but I, and I I I mean, I get emotional thinking about Star Wars with kids anyways, because it's, mm -hmm. you know, like, I can't believe I You're getting this. me emotional. <laughs> and I remember in that moment, look, well, when, when, when Carrie Fisher dies, I'm sobbing and I have I Michael and I have Jack holding my hand, like, it's I gonna know. Be okay, daddy, it's going to be okay. And I'm like, <laughs> which is, why are you comforting me? <laughs> yeah, which is one <laughs> thing. And then Ray says Skywalker. And I look to my family and I'm like, oh my God, it's I got to Skywalker. take someone's name. Mm -hmm. And Eli is going to be able to take someone's our name and have a life. Oh, look mm -hmm. at that. Hey. Like, <laughs> <I know>. <laughs> sorry. <laughs> but like, oh, don't be sorry. It meant <laughs> so low. Well, actually, how perfect is this? Come here. Yeah. Exactly. It's perfect. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you saved me lunch. So. Thank you. This is Michael. <laughs> Hi. Hi, Michael. How's it going? But to see, to see <laughs> that in her yeah. just meant everything. And I'm like, how mm -hmm. can someone want someone to be a no one when I my my own life I'm looking at four five people who felt like no one's forever and got to be something together and it was just like this beautiful thing to me so as much as I don't like the rise of Skywalker I'm like it gave me that okay. and that is the most powerful thing like ever and you, 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 I, you I, just changed the ending changed of Skywalker it. forever <laughs> for me it's, it's, yeah I'll never look at it the same way again now yeah. I, I, <laughs> I didn't really see yeah. it that way i i no, saw no, them I, as I, just like no, you know no, I, I, you you have wow yeah, uh, yeah. because yeah. You have she acknowledged changed, her yes. adopted I, I, family mm -hmm. she chose them as their mm -hmm. family and then she yeah. sees luke and leia as her adoptive father and mother and and wow. she chose it yeah no one chose told it. her to she yeah. chose it because she found comfort in it she was that girl when she was a no one that everyone mm -hmm. wanted, not everyone, yeah. a lot of yeah. very loud voice wanted her to be a no one. She's like, I thought that was a myth. That was the dream that she held onto. That was the dream that held her from being an mm -hmm. abandoned eight year old yeah. kid. That legend gave her life. That legend of I one day will be that too. One day, maybe I can be something. And then we see in The Last Jedi, those little kids in that epilogue, no one's again, slaves, yeah. abandoned, the legend of Luke Skywalker gave them hope. They <laughs> smiled because they're sitting there playing a game, right? So then Ray not only takes it for herself, but all those other little no ones in the entire world can yeah. be someone. And she was going to carry that Skywalker name for the entire galaxy oh to give God. the galaxy hope. Like it was so, like, I love, it is so beautiful. Like it is so perfect and beautiful. My mind is blown. <laughs> yes. Uh, bright, like, yeah. 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 I think, yeah. I think.
I think that's such a high point in the conversation that we should just kind of like <laughs> stop. Yeah, because it's there. been long <laughs> and we want people to get to here and listen to this well, part. Let's, let's, yes. just, let's just say that thank you, Brian, for yeah. collectively changing all our minds. Yeah. And Thank and to you. for us to actually see the ending of the saga now in a positive point, because I think we were all very disappointed in, yeah. you know, what uh, Rise did to it and how it was like unfulfilling. But with this point of view, now, it now makes like... it, I know, it, it <laughs> yeah. makes it very, very fulfilling, actually, that this it is does, how it, it ended. Because like, was... that's, when you, you find your name, that's, that's, that's key. That's, yep. <sighs> Oh, that is so beautiful. Yes. So, thank you. so I'm thinking this is a good way to say yes. goodbye then. <laughs> thank you for having me. I honestly, no, it was, thank a, it was you a privilege. It was an honor. Thank you. I appreciate it. No, you Brian, all thanks all for coming people. on. You had very amazing things to say. Uh, Hope to have you again. I, 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 I will yes. use, the, I will use the quote that's been used against me. Brian, you have the best words. <laughs> <laughs> yeah we tell mo he has the best words all the time but brian have very beautiful words you win yeah well. you win the battle today you, you win the battle. <laughs> no no thank yes you. yes thank you it was on and where can people where can people find you uh you can find me on Twitter at B underscore Sips Pink Milk. You can follow the podcast on Instagram and Twitter at Serving Pink Milk. Uh, you can find us on all your podcatchers uh, Wednesdays <laughs> when I speak with my husband from a more casual perspective. You can see me on YouTube where sometimes my children try on necklaces on Friday. That's awesome. <laughs> yes. you try necklaces, get for it. Uh, you can find us on Friday nights on Peak Milk After Dark, where we live stream. Right now, we're recapping uh, our first impressions of Mandalorian, 11 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Uh, and that's, what, 7, 8 p.m. PST right now. But that's where you can find us, where we talk Star Wars queerly. And you can hear me <laughs> ramble a lot, just like this. <laughs> yeah, no. it was fantastic. It was amazing. We hope to have you back again. Yes, it will be. anytime. Anytime. Yes. It was a privilege. Honestly, y'all are great. I yeah, love, I'm I love pretty sure we can find a lot of things to talk about too. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> Perfect. And we will have you on our show here. Yes. At some point. We would be honored. We will be honored. Yes. As well. Yes. Awesome. All and right. it would well, be a lot you. of fun. So um yeah. so for our fans, I'm gonna be on Geeky Waffles next weekend yeah. for we will see it's if it's gonna be the Ahsoka reveal. Who knows? We shall Ooh. see. That's so so nicely planned. It's amazing. I know. <laughs> so for the rest of you guys, follow us on Twitter, subscribe on YouTube, share it, leave us a review. Thank you. And to all of you guys, I love you. May the force be with you. Take care. One more thing, too. I'm sorry. Yeah, oh, no. in two weeks. We're going to be on Star Wars Explained. For yes. their Mando oh. rewatch. I'm very excited. Ooh. Oh, okay. yeah, that's, so a, that's a big deal. That's it's huge. Big deal. <laughs> it's a so, big so deal. Check, definitely check the yes, check the twenty seven. That yes, that'll yes. be fun. Definitely. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Thank you. Sorry. Bye. <laughs>